and uh, they have, uh, before I start, they have six minutes to speak and three minutes of open discussion and talk. And if we could keep within that time frame, would be lovely. Um, so first up, I would like to introduce you all to the president of the Indian American Intellectuals Association, Ari Sahani Ji. He is a community leader and activist in New York and the US, and he has taken over from the wonderful and larger than life Nareen Kataria Ji, whom we all remember and we are friends with. What a wonderful man. And so without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Arish Ji, who has been doing so much for us in New York City over so many decades. Thank you. Namaskar. Before I start, I want to recite Gayatri Mantra, and I hope everybody knows Gayatri Mantra. I hope everybody sitting here is a Hindu by his ancestors. So now let's say, Om, 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 and now we do Gayatri Mantra about three times. Om, Bhurva, Swa, Tasa, Vita, Vareniyam, Bhargo, Deva, Sude, Dimei, Dio, Yona, Prachodayat, Om, Bhurva, Swa, भारत मदा की भारत मदा की भारत मदा की इस ऑनर टू सिट स्टैंड हेयर एंड टॉक टू यू on a very simple, basic things. Indian American Intellectual Forum was formed by Mr. Nayan Kataria, me, Chaudhary, and M.G. Prashad. Kataria ji is not here, Dr. M.G. Prashad is not here, but me as a president, and Chaudhary as a vice president, and you are all the members of uh, Indian American Intellectual Forum just by attending this program. So you should feel the part of this Indian American Intellectual Forum. Now, question is why we are gathered here and why these meetings are important. I think the meetings are very important. When people get together, they start feeling about each other. Now, when you sit here, sit with each other, you connect to each other. Then love and respect develops automatically. So these meetings are very, very important. And we should thank Chaudhary for this because he initiated this idea that we should get together and we should even 50 people come, 40 comes, doesn't matter, let's get together. And I want to thank Chaudhary to taking the initiative. We have been conducting Indian Hindu Unity Day for the last 22 years. And we have been very successful because of only one reason, because we have Dr. Subraman Swami as our chief guest every time. And every time he comes here, we arrange the program and it becomes a success. And he's the only one we know he is for Hindus because he talks clearly and point to the point. And I think we should all watch what he says, when he says, where he says. He's always on the YouTube. And I request all of you, if you have not watched him, please do that. So that will be my request to you. Now coming to today's point, it's very simple. Everybody knows what CA is there. I'm not going to describe it at all. So what I'm going to tell you, I have some questions. And hopefully, these questions will make you understand why, what we should be doing. <coughs> so I want to ask you some questions. You call yourself human beings. You are educated. You know how to get information. You're, you call yourself Hindu. You belong to the oldest culture of world. You know other civilization perished. You know your civilization still exists because this civilization has been birth of many great souls who brought new thoughts and reform. You know you have an enemy. You know these facts. Your enemy has a very clear goal. You know your enemy lives around you. You know enemy plants. You are the people who are who are people who are bad. Do you ever told them that they are bad? If not, why not? Do you have a leader? Do you like him or her? What you can do for them? 
do you, do you know the history of Islam? Do you know the history of Christian? Do you know how and when local Do you know how many millions died to resist? So do you know the history of Christian? Do you know how and when local got converted to their cultures? Do you see any control of your your when and where you will you will uh, uh, when will you raise it? You know there is no one like you in this world. You know you are unique, but you know today what you do to your what you do affects your surrounding. If you are good, if you are good, thanks to your parents and to your company, now you can see what happening to the world around you. Why I'm asking this question? Because these are the questions should come in everybody's mind. If you don't have these questions in mind, you will not get up and do anything. So the, the whole idea of putting these questions was not to give you details of what CA is there. Don't, I don't want to tell you what is happening in India, what Islam is doing, what Christian is doing. You should know, ask this question to yourself, and from this question you should initiate your self-knowledge. This 21st century is a century of information. Everything is available on the fingerprints. It's very, I feel sometimes very ashamed. All the people who converted in the last 1500 years or 2500 years have all the information to know what happened to the people who converted and who didn't convert it. And it's time that they should understand, go to the Google, search what their forefathers were there, why they converted, and why they're still uh, following the same culture, while they can convert and change themselves. Today, if you see in America, we have many good souls came in this country. We have Mr. We have ISKCON organization, started by Prabhupada, who was at age 60, came in this country. Look what he has done, miracle. Only with one reason, he brought some message. Message of non-violence, not on violence, but also devotion, yoga, meditation, and uh, loving each other, giving free, free food. So all these good things, we have it. Why we Hindus are not doing anything, while we can do a lot. Now, why we are not doing anything? Because we are not united. Why we are not united? We don't know the reasons. Maybe we don't have leaders. Maybe we have leaders, but they don't know what to do. So all this meeting, what we are doing is to bring, I am putting this question in your mind, so you should ask yourself, hey, is my, what is my life is all about? Today we have been told as a Hindu that you should always ask this question to yourself. Why I am born? What I am doing in this earth? What are my goals and where I'll go after the, after I'm, I'm dead? You all know that today whatever we have belong to somebody else. As per the as per uh, our uh, uh, Gita and whatever we have will, will belong to somebody else and it will go to somebody else in the future. So we come with nothing, go with nothing. The so question is, what we are doing in this country, what we are doing in this world, we should be very careful about it. You should bless yourself first, and you should be proud of yourself for one thing, that you are born Hindu. To be born Hindu is a privilege. So it's very important. Hello, sir. You can keep that back, sir. Yeah, okay. We don't need it. So it's very important, we should be proud of ourselves that you are born as a Hindu. As you are born Hindu, then the question is, what is your goal and what is your responsibility? You know, today, few cultures are hated. Hated so badly, not only the headed, hated actually, whoever has converted in Middle East, Africa, look at their life, look at your life. What is the difference? People who are converted, look at the Middle East, how the Middle East has, Middle East has been destroyed. Look at the people who are converted living in Bangladesh and Pakistan. They want to come to India. They don't want to live there. You know, they are converted, but they have no reason to live there. So we should be very happy and proud of our culture, and we should go out and promote our culture one way or another way. People who are converted, they have no, they, they want to come back, but we are not asking them to come back. Why are we not asking them to come back? Because if you look around, there are 56 Islamic nations, 100 Christian nations, not a single Hindu nation. So this CA came with the idea that okay, all the Hindus who are in prosecuted should be allowed to come to India and get citizenship. It was a very good idea. 
But seems like that this idea was not accepted by the people who got convert. So we have to teach them, inform them, and I hope this sessions of ours, hope the people who are sitting here will go with the message and these questions which I have just told, there are a lot more questions are there. Maybe I'll come back and talk about those questions in the future. In the meantime, I want to thank everybody who has come here. Please go with the message very clearly. Be proud of yourself and know what you are here for and what you can do for the country. For every country, we need leaders. And if you have a leader, you should know how to support him. Without leaders, you are nothing. If you are a leader, if you don't support it, then you are nothing also. So you should know, today we have good leaders in India. BJP government is in the power. After so many years, they have majority, but the majority can be lost if we don't support them. So I hope and request everybody, if you are Hindu, if you should work for Hinduism, you should work for your future generation. Your future generation will survive only if you do something. Like our forefathers, our Sikh gurus, uh, sacrifice themselves to see that we Hindus survive. So it is our duty for our children and grandchildren to see we sacrifice ourselves. Maybe money, maybe time, whatever it is, to make sure that our civilization survives. So I'm very happy to see that you are all here. So I thank and back to Nisha now. Vilas Reddy, who is the OF BJP Youth Convener, who came from Edison, New Jersey. He's just going to speak quickly. Uh, namaste. My name is Vilas Reddy, Overseas Friends of BJP, National Youth Co Convener. Uh, special thanks to Indian American Intellectual Forum because uh, to open discussion about secularism, what is CAI, many speakers have gave wonderful suggestions. These discussions should go to the social media. Whatever discussion in this room, it should go in the outside of the media. So other than America, we have should social media. social media, we can inform to other countries what is CAA, what is uh, Modi is doing. And uh, many times the intellectual words comes always communists are coming, universities, and they will give the lectures, they will talk about in all negatives of India. So we need to and the, we need to encounter from this Indian American Intellectual Forum. Now onwards, it should open for forum always. So all the show up is needed in future also. And uh, I am from Hyderabad, uh, Telangana. You know the famous word uh, Telangana, Hyderabad means you remember one name. is the MIM, OIC. I know. Those are and the present government TRS, Telangana Rashtra Samiti government in Telangana, they are not supporting for CAA. Because of, in Hyderabad, you know, 50 lakhs, sorry, 50,000 undocumented, I mean, documented Rohingyas are in Hyderabad. So, that is the documented, and the undocumented are double or like four, five times. Because you know, right, the one Muslim family can 10 or 20 people come. So, that is a documented 50,000 Rohingyas in Hyderabad. We don't know undocumented. So that's why they are voting or appeasement they are doing. So we are now next West Bengal, the Telangana is the critical problem. So what is the next target is BJP government should form in West Bengal. After that, in Telangana, we are targeting. There's a next upcoming elections, West Bengal and Telangana, BJP will form. So now, my request is, all we need to support CAA, what is the Citizen Amendment Act. Today, we are doing a Times Square, 2 o'clock, all Indian American community with along with OABJP. So, we have once this session done, please come to the Times Square. It is 20 minutes from here. Uh, 2 o'clock, please join and please support. Thank you. Thanks a lot, all the team.
miseries of partition, these two gentlemen, Modi ji and Omisha, give us that. That means we full heartedly support it. Please do it. But we add one thing that please don't keep the border open. We are too close Bangladeshi, still in Bangladesh. Bangladeshi Hindus want to live in Bangladesh with peace and dignity. Ensure that. These two Hindus, these two, two crore Hindus, is a friend to India, and they are deterrent factor to, to Islamic terrorists. If these two crore Hindus are there, Bangladesh will not be Pakistan. So please, help us, help these two crore, two crore Hindus to stay in Bangladesh. Okay, I think just, we had given a statement, you have saw it, saw it, that something like 20 countries, something uh, like three, four dozen people, international. And uh, it has been published in Calcutta. It will be published in uh, India abroad, called me yesterday. They, they told me that they will publish it. I'm sure a lot of uh, newspaper will publish, publish it. They also say the same thing. CAA is a blessings to Bangladeshi Hindus. I'm talking about Bangladeshi only because I am from Bangladesh. CAA is a blessings to Hindus. Somebody write in my Facebook Facebook that if Modi is there, there will be no Pakistan. He's a, he's he, he's from Bangladesh majority community. I said that's why Modi is Modi should be there. We don't need Pakistan. Please answer everything positively. That means. This is Pakistan is a terrorist country. We don't need Pakistan. And, uh, and it, as Indian, I, suppose I am from Bangladesh, but I don't I don't do BJP. I don't do RSS. I don't do Vishal Dibhushan. But I support BJP. Why? Because he's thinking of me. If one, if you, if you want, whatever something good for Hindus in India, just keep Modi in power. <clears throat> These two gentlemen, Bharat Modi and Shah, will do a lot of things. Believe me, next step is POK. Pakistan occupied Kashmir. Definitely these two gentlemen will take it. Take it guaranteed from me. <laughs> they are talking this openly now. This Kashmir was never Pakistan's property. It, it was always India's part and parcel. Indian wrong politics from 47 to until this 2014-15, Pakistan, uh, uh, Pakistan claimed POK. Deputy leader and president of the Motua Mission Temple. Namaskar, brothers and sisters. Uh, I think many things have been told and uh, I do not want to repeat. Uh, uh, just in respect to CAA, uh, what is it? And everybody knows and uh, this has been citizenship given to some group of people. I want to add and I want to thank first to Indian government, Modi ji, Amit Shah ji, for this. Uh, I want to make a very important point. I want you guys to pay a little attention. If Sanatan Dharma goes away from India, uh, that will be the end of the human race on the planet. And we need to preserve that. That's very important responsibility we have. And to facilitate that responsibility and to preserve Sanatana Dharma on, in India and the world, I request Indian government that to grant citizenship to any Hindus of any part of the world willing to come to India. Israel has done it and it has proven that is very effective way to preserve. You know Israel is a very small country, surrounded by countries that want to destroy them. 
they could not. They prevailed and prevailed very strong. And if India is strong, remain strong, I think that will create a tremendous solidarity among the, all the Hindus all over the world. And that message has to be conveyed to Prime Minister Modi. Yes. Uh, next thing, I, oh, Pavitruda told me that uh, what we are doing uh, in respect to that CAA can be implemented and what is happening now. So things what we are doing, let me put, uh, give my identity a little bit. Most of the people may not know. With the CAA, uh, it is mostly Bengalis, the Bangladeshi Bengalis are being affected. And among the Bengalis, the Motuo community is 90%. And we are the most beneficiary of this. We are the victim, now we have become the most beneficiary of this system. So at any cost, we will preserve it. We will make it happen. Uh, we will not let it go in vain. So what we are doing at this time, I, you know that the established media, Anand Bajar and other media, is very, very much biased against it. Very much. Uh, I saw the other day, one of the scholars from uh, Ramakrishna Mission uh, wrote a letter against CAA. Uh, <laughs> uh, I want to ask, is, you know there is Dhaka, there is a famous Kali temple? Yes. Yes. Ramana Kali temple, is it there or no? A little bit. It's almost gone. Dhaka, <clears throat> Dhaka, I'm talking about. Yes, Dhaka. Dhaka. Yeah, it's not there anymore. So, if tomorrow West Bengal become an Islamic country, will the Knesset remain there? Is there any guarantee? So, why these scholars are writing about? I do not understand this thing. The a scholar from from Krishna Mission writes against CAA. This is scholar, I don't know why they got their scholarship. They are not scholars. They are not scholars. They are the Bengali. Yes. Are they are all people. They are the proper. Okay. So what to do about it? We, we know the established media does not help us much. So social media is open. So let's do something on the social media. Very yes. good. Yes. I have gathered IT specialists, I have one of my IT specialists here. We want to search the whole social media and want to focus what is going against it and what. I mean, we want to show the true nature of these people, those who oppose it, and we want to show that we are also supporting it. You guys have seen that the demonstration or the uh, show we saw in the streets of Calcutta, the uh, Mutuas has shown, probably no media has published it. Another was did not publish it. But we had hundreds of thousands of people chanting and cheering for the CAA on the streets of Calcutta. And we have to show this thing that there are people around the world, in the, everywhere, that we are supporting CAA. And I think social media, we have to pick up the social media. And we have to encourage our intellectual among ourselves also to write about it. We are not writing it. And we need to organize, do we publish it. And we are uh, planning to do that. Now, I am trying to say another very important issue. Uh, please pay attention. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Dithyan Roy just said that demography. Do you know what is the percentage of uh, Muslim people Muslim percentage in West Bengal? Anybody know? 35. 35. 35, that was 2011. Now it's 47. Now 40. Okay. So now, how did it happen? 30 years of communist rule and 80 years of Didi systematically brought people from neighboring country, gave them voter ID, gave them the ration card, gave them everything. They are now there. No, no, no. no. It's a Hindu Bengali. Hindu Bengalis. Hindu Bengalis have done this. Right. That's true. So these are communist people. Or, or those who are in the power, they did it. Now, if we allow another five years of Didi, what will happen to the demography? You already seen 
somebody told banners hanging in Dhaka, banners hanging in Barasa, in uh, area that Islamic state of Bengal. So it is happening. If we allow in 2021 Mamata Banerjee to win there, and this is going to happen. If West Bengal gone, the whole Northeast will go. Is it clear to everybody? Yes. yes. So can we allow that? Can we allow that 2021 Mamata Banerjee goes there? No. No. So we have to put in action the plan. And you know the Willy Motuas. We are the single most solidified group in West Bengal, and unfortunately still two crores of Mathuras living in Bangladesh. Uh, so we will think about them in a different way, but let us talk about West Bengal. We, in West Bengal Assembly, we have 295 seats, and we are decisive factor in 80 seats. So we have a very good, and with the CAA, our numbers will go up, no doubt about it. Because there are 70 lakhs people of the East Bengal people are living with those who will be beneficiary of the CAA. We need to implement immediately or unconditionally. That's what everybody, any every Hindu who comes from Bangladesh or in any place gets residence in India, they get the border. Right. Now, we need to make a solid plan from now onward with the leadership of Modi ji, with our collaboration of BJP, Mathuas, so that we win in 2021 election in West Bengal. So we must admit the fact. So why are we here today, the Hindus all over the world, and in India in such a bad condition? This was religious discriminatory practice for thousands of years. That is the somebody told we have to uni unify. We were not unified because we created division after division after division among ourselves, and we practiced it for thousands of years, and we ruined ourselves. We must get rid of this thing. Officially, I am seeing Subramanian Samiti is telling everybody's DNA is same. Don't, so don't see the I am up, I am down. Forget about this thing. He is talking about it. Please accept it and let unify. Let unify at this time. Modi ji is our leader. BJP is the right party. We must unify with them and get everybody under one umbrella and win the election of 2021. If we do not win 2021 in West Bengal, that will be the end of India, I'm telling you. That it will be the end of India. The whole demography will change. And if once there is a Harvard study shown that in any country, Muslims become 16% or more, that country is eventually will be a Muslim country. Because they have systemic, pro systematically they have a plan, that plan they execute, and this is going on. Have you heard that one lakh Rohingyas are given Bangladeshi passport, Indian visa, and settled in Kashmir? Have you heard that? Yes. Now yeah. only. Now only. Now. All these years we never heard. No. Now only you are hearing. Sir. So look at this systematic plan. Where is the money coming from? Who is giving them passport in Bangladesh? Who is giving visa in Dhaka, uh, High Commission of Dhaka? And who is, how they are being transported to all through India and going to uh, Kashmir and settling in... Uh, 100,000 Rohingyas are settled already in Kashmir. Maybe Hashina's plan. <laughs> so we know this thing. So this is time to wake up. Please wake up and do something. We are planning elaborately. Vishwajit is here. I told him uh, that we have elaborate plan. We have to work so that we win 2020. This is a very serious issue. I want you to uh, pay attention. Pay a little bit of your time. As we said, the Hindus are most divided society. We talk, we talk so many things. We are big, big scholars. We show all the secularism. If India goes all secularism, we go. If you, have, if you are secular, why don't you preach to Bangladesh? Why, when 
this uh, country became Islamic country. Nobody, no scholars, no intellectual from Calcutta raised any voice. No research. No, no research done. Do you know that three, the three million people are killed in Bangladesh in 1971 and 2.7 million are Hindus? Who did any research on that genocide? All these scholars are sitting around. This is the forgotten genocide of the human history. Nobody talk about it. Because they are Hindus, they are low caste Hindus, that's a reason. Forget about this thing. Be united, start definite plan. We are putting everybody's plan. Who are, who are interested, please uh, contact us. We have elaborate plan how to revive this thing, change the course of the thing. If we do not change now, it will be too late. Thank you very much. I want to add here one point. A community survives only if you have a leader. And you have to choose the leader properly. If you have a leader, you have to support it. If you don't support, then your will not exist at all. Here we have a leadership. Now if you don't support the leader, you will not exist. Your generation will not exist. So think about it. Anybody has any question what I told about? Why, Thank you. Why Modi is going? Uh, is not going to protect Mamata Didi. <laughs> uh, I cannot speak for that, but uh, if he if he make an underline under the table deal with uh, Mamata Ji, it will be suicide for India. I'm telling you, but I'm going to tell him that. Thank you. Please don't forget to make any small donations that you can to the organization. You can give it to Arish Ji at the end if you would like. Um, next in our list, I have four speakers left. Uh, is Arun Ghosh here? I would like to call Arun Ghosh Ji to this floor. Namaste. আমি আর কি বলবো সবাই তো বলে দিয়েছি আমি আমাদের মানে মাইনরিটি যে পার্সেন্টেজ ছিল সেই পার্সেন্টেজ করার চেষ্টা করুন আর জুড়ে যদি জার্মানি থেকে কম্পেন্সেশন রেসিস্টেন্ট পেয়ে থাকতে পারে আমরাও সেটা চাই এবং যে কাজটা মোদি করেছে খুবই ভালো কাজ তা আমি এটাও চাই আগামী বছর টোয়েন্টি টোয়েন্টিতে মানে আমাদের বাংলাদেশে আমাদের পপুলেশন গ্রোথ হয়ে থার্টি পার্সেন্ট সেম থিং লাহোর পাকিস্তান একই জিনিস আর যতগুলো সম্পত্তি নিয়েছে সব ফিরছে বাকি সব তো রয়েছে should be returned. And that's what the Jewish people did. So why can't they do it? And this is correct. You know, already they have stopped Durga Puja. They have destroyed so many temples in West Bengal. You know what they call Mamta? Mamta Begum. <laughs> and what I call her? Mamta Begum. I finish here. Our next speaker is Ashok Chakrabarti. Are you here? No? Okay. Um, okay, I'd like to call on um, Sri Bamandas Patnaik. Okay. No? Next speaker. Thank you.
So I'm going to say on behalf of my dad, but first of all, I think a lot of good points were made, especially you. You know, even within our Hindu communities, we have many, many divisions. Okay, and let's not even go back to the history. We know that a caste system has been a phenomenal drawback in our society. So many people also got converted before that. But let alone, I think the biggest problem what we have is even within the Hindus, there are big chunk of people that are supporting um, uh, the CA, and then there are others that are supporting Mamta Banerjee. I think our foremost thing is that, how can we convert those people, yes, right? I think that is the foremost and the fundamental thing. I mean, if, you know, leaving alone, I think every religion has good and bad, but if you look at Hinduism, you know, as the Shonatan Dharma that we talk about, I'm um, certainly it's scientific, it, it is, you know, it's a tolerance, it's accepting, it's everything, right? I think it's sort of definitely, the, you know, it's based on philosophy, right? I mean, it's, it's converted into a religion, but ultimately it's based on philosophy, and it's, it's a phenomenal philosophy, right? The point is, is that there are people, like in every religion, that misconstrue and, you know, misconstrue it, and, I mean, twist it for their own needs. But the point is, is that, I think we as a Hindu first need to educate others. There are comments made everywhere in social media and everything. And I think as many esteemed people here, um, you know, suggested, I think we should write. Like me personally, I make it a point. I mean, there's one Muslim guy, his name is Dr. Razwan. Okay, he supports Modi. And he actually, which I mean, uh, that's why I said we have to be very careful. Let's not say Islam. We say in the name of Islam, people are doing this. I think that will make our voice a lot more prominent. Because the moment we say Islam and we Hindu, you're segregating, you're making a very bad impression. I think impression is very, very important. The point is, is that you know, we should selectively choose people that understand that India has always been in support for the oppressed. Right? When, if you go back to the Parsi, if you go back to the Jewish, so many, if you look at Poland, there are almost, you know, a million people that Indian actually, in, in Indian welcomed, when none of the European countries were welcoming them. The whole population would have been abolished. So India throughout the history has always accepting people, the oppressed. And that's what Dr. Razwan said. He said, you know, people are misconstruing, twisting things. In, you know, as I said, like, um, I mean, India is not bringing people that oppress, majority oppressed. You know, they, I mean, India is not inviting them or, or accepting them. India is only focusing on people that are oppressed. So the point is, I think that sort of information should be, should be in the media, you know, and should be in any, any form of media. And I think that is the most important thing that we have to take from here, and that is what we need to convey in our own way, either through social media or in the universities or through friends that you know, if you can educate. It's, you know, through words, I think we can convey a lot to a lot of people. I think that's very, very important. Educating people that don't know, they in turn will help us propagate that information. I think that's what's very important. See, here I would like to add something. Everybody reads newspaper in, in the internet nowadays. Every newspaper after the news has a comment section. I think everybody has an email address. Why not everybody start writing their opinions in the comment section? That will go a long, long way. I have been doing it for the last 15 years, and you'll be surprised I got more than 100 followers. More than 100,000 comments I have put in the newspaper, and I think you can do the same thing. 
media, social media has become a bigger media than all fake media. So it's time that we should. We are all learned people, we are all educated people. We can always write few lines. We have experience, we know uh, the history also. A lot of people don't know anything about history. As we are talking about, some of the leaders even don't know the history uh, about the world actually. So it's time that we should put some comments based on our experience, based on our knowledge. And simultaneous, and now, this kind of massacres and pogroms are very well documented. Rape, arson, grisly murders, eviction. In a country smaller than Arkansas, they have seized three million acres of land from the Hindus and some Buddhists and Christians by using the so-called Enemy Property Act. Who is the enemy? India is the enemy. Property who owns them? The people who in the face of atrocities had to flee to India. This is Mr. Alamgir, Bangladesh. I'm not saying everyone. Sheikh Hasina is slightly different. She doesn't directly license killing of the Hindus, but looks the other way. So all of them, successive governments have taken three million acres of land. And if I go on and on for hours, I have some research, published research on this. This is the way they do the atrocities. Here is one example, if I may. The BNP, nationalists and Islamists, they enter a house, they kill the brother. He asks for water, they urinate into his mouth. In the other room, they rape his daughter and his sister and his wife, who had a C-section surgery just a week before. So I'm sorry, I mean, there are other people who come very sorry about it. There are other people, there are other people who are experts and work from the field that could give you a better sense of it, but I could do too. But I'm stopping it here. This is Fakrul Alamgir and this is Bangladesh. And how many people have fled to India since 1971? The atrocities started right in 72 during the puja. They vandalized everything in the Exodus began, and it is very well documented. Professor Barakat, one of the leading professors of Bangladesh, has said it's published everywhere. After 30 years, not a single Hindu will be left in Bangladesh. India has done a favor to accommodate these people. India, through the, the citizenship act, did not grant citizenship or any relief to the 100,000 Sri Lankan Tamil Hindus there just because they are Hindus. They have given a relief to the victims of religious persecution. To my knowledge, moving to the second point, to my knowledge, there are no registered or known Muslim victims of minority persecution in India. I fail to understand why does this issue arise at all? Where are they? It's by no means the communal legislation, as I said, the Sri Lankan Hindus, they're ethnic, victims of ethnic stuff. But it's not a communal legislation. Yes, it has been acknowledged by the Imam Bukhari. You have seen that? He said that this legislation has nothing to do with the Muslims of India, right? So this was overdue once again. We are thankful to India for that, Modiji and Amit Shahji and all of us. And here, I forgot to say, Indian Intellectual Forum is a witness to all that happened to us for 30, 35 years we have been doing it. I would love to name names here, the Narendra Kukarji, Shahaneji, Pobitra, they're all here, but I, I don't want to go into that. I just want to spend one more second on the NRC. I think I have covered the other one. NRC. They're making a big deal. NRC is very difficult, and by doing NRC, government of India will deny citizenship to the true citizens, Muslim citizens of India. The answer is, this is, an unequivocal no to this, it's a complete falsehood, look at Bangladesh. In India, first of all, NRC began in 1951, I think, the Substantial Act of 19, after the census. It's a continued process because the Assamists don't want any Hindus in their country, citing homogeneity, they're losing their cultural homogeneity, linguistic homogeneity, etc. It's an internal matter of India, and I don't want to dwell on this. But look at Bangladesh, how easy it is to do an NRC. First of all, 
Every country has the right to have a list of who its citizens are and who are not. Particularly at this time, you don't want any unknown people in your country who, who, who is not a citizen there illegally, because they can do all kinds of, they can wreck havoc, cause mischiefs in India. My final word, if Bangladesh could do NRC in 2006, July, and they produced an NID, national ID card, in order to receive 22 kinds of services, including passport, including all kinds of things, I, I can name on and on. You need that NID. You cannot do anything without an NID. Why is it so difficult for the Muslims of India, my Muslim brothers of India, to prove that they are the son of the soil or they are parent soil? Thank you very much. See, I'm so happy that you all people have come on Sunday morning to listen to these great words, and I hope you go with some message and some action plan for the future. And it's very important to know what India government is doing under BJP is very, very important. So let me ask you, how many people would like in their home to get a stranger and live with them? How many people like it? Nobody would like some stranger get into the house and live with them. So how a country can allow strangers to come and live with them? That's what Mr. Trump is doing, and that's what India government should do. I hope everybody should support India government for these issues. And now, with uh, further ado, I'd like to call uh, Dr. Gillan Roy. Come here, come here. I believe there is a gathering in Times Square at 2 p.m. for those who would like to attend on the CAA. Um, if you are a speaker, would you please position yourself to sit at the front so it will be much easier? Um, um, Dr. Jelena. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I will not repeat what Dr. Bortsu Sergio has already discussed. What I am going to emphasize on is the is the CAA. CAA is, in my view, is giving a residency for the victims of atrocities, victims of persecution, which is just like asylum law in the US. It, it compares to that. If you are a victim, if you have, uh, if you are afraid of your life, you leave the country, you, you can ask for an asylum in the U.S. Same thing is happening in India. It is nothing more than that. Those who are persecuted because of religion or other region, they can have this kind of citizenship or a legal residency in India. In that. I, mean, I would like to say, say which nobody has mentioned, India uh, needs to look at its demographic change because culture is associated with the country. Country has culture and when that culture is changed, the face of the country can change. And I, I want to see that uh, uh, India should look at their cultural demography. It is changing. If you look at West Bengal, what you will see is it is totally different from what you have looked, at, you have seen before when you were, you know, young, young children or, or something. It is, it is totally different today. I hear that there are talk of secession, West Bengal want to get dissociated with India. And uh, I see the placard, I see banners of, of Bangladeshan. What that means is there is a group which is gaining power. And that group wants to 
get West Bengal separated from India. And, and this thing will happen everywhere if you let it happen. So, so this part you should not ignore. So CIA, what it will do, it will help uh, to make the, the demographic balance equilibrium in West Bengal, mostly in West Bengal. Uh, I would, uh, that's, that will help the Indian, uh, I would say, cultural atmosphere. I think other issue, Dijen has already discussed, so I will stop here because uh, we don't have that much time to talk about everything else. Thank you. Any question on demography? I think this is a very important issue he has raised actually. Demographic and really ruin your country. Today, India's demography is changing. He has pointed it very nicely and correctly. So let's make a note of it. Can we have uh, Professor? He is nothing but to destroy you. And they have got games to destroy you. No, no, I'm not talking about them uh, absolutely. Again, you have to see in terms of conversion, right? There are many, many things. No, 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 no. Conversion, conversion is their business. It is for money making. It is, no, no. Let's not. You're not listening to me. You're going totally. Please listen to me, what I'm saying. I'm saying yes. Why don't you allow her to come here and talk? I'm saying Hinduism absolutely is one of the greatest philosophy, religion, scientific religion. I'm totally in favor. And I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, because Hinduism is the way Hinduism is, which we know is, it's, you know, it's one of the most scientific language, it's very philosophical, it doesn't discriminate all these things. So with that framework in mind, what I'm trying to say is the moment you say they are Islam, we do, what I'm trying to say, our own philosophy, the fundamental philosophy, you're actually, you're kind of, how to say, you're minimizing the philosophy. What I'm trying to say is that we should reach, you know, politicians and say, look, this is what Hinduism is all about. We support the oppressed. We you. help the oppressed. Very good. Thank but you very we much. Do not yes. We agree with you. Thank right. you very much. Yeah, but anyway, the, the chief secretary for uh, Bernie Sanders is a Pakistani Muslim. That's what I'm saying. We have yeah. to reach out politicians we can talk to. They can speak. What the Tulsi government is doing a great yeah. job. We can support Tulsi yeah. government. Let me tell you something. All these people are educated people. They are not fools. They have all the information. They don't want to accept whatever they need. That is a problem. It is their mindset. So don't tell us that we can go and educate them. They cannot be educated. Okay? So let us just march onwards with the talks. I know everybody's getting very passionate about about the issue. The talk is here today for a particular reason, not for discussing the general or asserting your We are concerned with that particular section. Thank you. So I'd like to. I'd like to get to our next speaker, Dr. Basuli Dev, who is an author and a professor from Queen's College and Nebraska. <laughs> no, they give me the information. All right, okay, thank you. So I'm going to give the floor to Dr. Dev. I'm going to, unlike the others, I'm, I'm, I will need my last class. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, I'll, I'll stand. Um, I just need to, um, I will introduce myself a little bit so that you know where I'm coming from because um, my talk, uh, it's going to be extremely brief. Um, uh, and I'm going to... Uh, it's going to be very different from oh, what the others have said. So I'm sorry, I'm standing with my back to some people here. I uh, really apologize. Um, OK, so um, I, I, I do want to uh, mention uh, you know, some of my credentials so you understand where I'm coming from. Um, so I, uh, I'm currently a visiting scholar at the Institute for the Study of Human Rights at Columbia. And I'm also um, a global scholar at Rutgers New Brunswick at the Institute for Research on Women. And I teach at both the graduate and undergraduate levels at CUNY. Um, I, uh, uh, 
And the reason why I'm going to approach this issue from a conflict resolution point of view uh, is because that's, that's one of my key training because I started working um, on human rights issues at, uh, during, uh, 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 when I was working on the Guatemala genocide and currently I am working on the Rohingya genocide and the uh, refugee crisis. Uh, yes, but I do want to position myself because I just saw what happened. Um, okay, so, um, and you know, I'm very open to questions, so please do not hesitate to ask questions if you disagree with me or if you agree with me, I'm absolutely open and I will stand by for the audience if you have a disagreement with me. Okay, so, um, my very brief talk is called, What Does Democracy Look Like? Vandalism as an Obstacle to Conflict Resolution in a Democracy. In my brief talk today, I want to raise the key issue of conflict resolution in the Indian democracy today. The Greek root of the word democracy, uh, which is a combination of demos and kratia, translates as people's, people rule or rule by the people. However, the question that has, uh, that has been brought up again and again in the current Indian context is, who are the people? However, if we accept this contestation over the definition of democracy in India today, it is important to understand that on the ground, any kind of political dialogue that the opposition wants to have with the government has to keep democracy front and center in its discussion. No matter how many philosophers have argued that in its ideal form, democracy can also become anarchy. The pragmatic demands today, despite all the reasons the people or demos has for or against the establishment, is that their representatives, uh, no matter what, the, what their uh, arguments for or against, uh, at the heart of a resolution is the ability of the demos or the people to sit with the government for negotiation and dialogue. Vandalism and destruction of state property might send a message to the establishment about the anger of that part of the demos, which is opposed to the policies of the government, but it is not the most astute or wise way to pave the way for getting to the negotiation table for, the di for a dialogue with the government. Credibility is key here, no matter how conservative that argument sounds. Now, I also want to address the issue of media and democracy. When, when we, uh, both in the United States and um, in India, when, when we had constitutional protection for the freedom of the press, we were not talking in a world where social media was prevalent. Now, what, what it has become is we have a lot of independent journalists um, in social media. And what we need to also be aware, and I go back to the issue of credibility of the opposition, if, and I'm here playing the devil's advocate and talking about if, even if we do not agree with the opposition, by virtue of the fact that we are claiming ourselves to be you know, connected overseas with the democracy of India, we need to understand where uh, the freedom of press lies in an environment of social media. Do we distribute as activists, whether in favor of the establishment or against the establishment, as independent journalists who are also activists, do we take pictures of other kinds of congregation happening in other parts of the world and submit it on uh, social media and say, this is the level of opposition in India. India. Because that is fake news, right? And I'm, ha I'm sitting on Facebook and I'm seeing people having to pull down those pictures. 
either way, vandalism or the kind of fake news that has been circulated, it does not lead to credibility. And at the heart of the rule of the people, you know, whether it is for pragmatic reasons or whether it is for idealistic reasons, if they even want to get to the table to sit with the establishment, there has to be credibility. And I'm going to end with that. And you know, I do uh, want to open this up for a democratic dialogue. Yes. Question? What I mean by Rohingya genocide? Um, so what I'm looking at is the the and I, I you know I I cannot you know in the few minutes that I have for Q and A. I can't talk about the entire history, but you know I can take your answers after that. But very briefly, I'm really talking about the the, ki the kind of state religion, the, the Buddhism as a state religion that has been propagated. Yeah. Yes. The question here is: See, there is genocide only on the Rohingyas, but in this area, there are a lot of people. Living. Yes, absolutely. You're right. You're absolutely. So why there is genocide on the no. Why it is? Between Islam and them. No, uh, you're right. The genocide of the Buddhists, the Myanmar people, yeah. why the Rohingyas? There has been, um, I don't know whether this platform really gives me that scope to address the Rohingya issue. I agree, but we are also talking about state power in this kind of a situation. One more question from you. I have a question. <laughs> question from you. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, I have a question. Sure. Why we are talking about Rohingyas now? We are in danger. Well, that is another thing. Can you really sit in the United States and All dictate right. what right. can research? All you right. are asking me a question. I think no, I need to no, finish. What you are talking about sitting in the US. I am not talking We are sitting in the US. Talking about the problem back home in India. Yes. Rohingya is not a part of India. That's correct. And Thank now, you. now, no, I, I do want to. Now, no, this, is, this is not. This is very discourteous. This is very discourteous. I, I, we don't have this We don't have this problem. No. We, we, we talk back. about. Pain. We are here right now for simple reasons. We want to save India. We <laughs> want to save Hindu. We are not here to save Rohingya. Okay. That's it. I, I, Thank you very much. I, not okay. how I was informed when I was brought in as a speaker. Okay. That's you, not how I was informed. You spoke, and thank you very much. Mr. Khan, one thing. Thank you very much. Just one question. Well, I, I, don't think, I don't think we should adopt this thing anymore. This is very specific. You have to say, yeah. No. This is going to happen. You have to ask, who you put first? Yourself. Then even your kid. So why are you talking about Rohingya? I agree, with, I agree with you. I think we, He's I think she was not told. Him. No, she was not told, and we are sorry for that. We never told you. Okay. So let's close the yeah, chapter here. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. yeah. So now let's talk about. <laughs> okay. 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 I would like to listen to this. I There may be some discussion, there may be going astray, points may be missed, or some of the new points may be added. But the point is that Dr. Bashrul is a very renowned research order, and she was going to come in with that segment in later, but we do not have really the time for going into that segment case by case. She was making a case ready for going to that next segment. But I believe that we do not have the capacity or time to delay in that way. So I request Basuri to please come here and address the thing and just tell us in a point what what the Indians I mean, he, he, he in the USA, who don't want the country to be again turned into an Islamic country, can do, if, she, if you can. If, uh, um, have you have any suggestions for that? I think uh, I made it very clear that I would love
like democratic questions from audience. No, 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 no. And this is not the forum for that. No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Now you are so no, 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 Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. This is not the classroom okay. for that. For that. Ma I have a question. No. Yes. Ma I have a question. Yes. Ma I have a question. Right? Sure. So, 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 I have a question. This is not the forum for that. Sir, we got that message. Ma'am, I have a question. So yes, you are taking the human rights issue and maybe Rohingya is a good human rights issue from a perspective, maybe. <laughs> is it because that gets more media attention? Because there are, I'll, let me complete my question. <laughs> there are many countries where because of the state religion, yes. minorities have been persecuted. Right. Rohingya is not the only unique. Sure. There are others countries where big, the state religion uh -huh. has enforced and for all right? so, 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 so my question is uh, very, my question. We have to concentrate in the I, I know I was setting a stage because yeah let me complete my question so there is a very unique there is a very unique phenomena only that you find in India where despite the predominant and I would not use state religion but the predominant Bullshit, religion being Bullshit, Hindu being Hindu the Hindus, the, the Hindus have been persecuted the Hindus have been persecuted in Kashmir it's a very unique there are many such things why can't we why can't we have someone take up that and make a human rights issue out of that right so I do want to say that I work on genocides anywhere and Kashmir is an important issue for me I started working with the Guatemala genocide and, the, you know, I work on genocide issues irrespective of how it is happening. This is a very unique example because there are, you will find genocide everywhere. This is the only example where 80% majority and yet they are persecuted by minority. I think this is a very unique example you have seen in why they have. Sir, sir, one second. If anyone can talk about the present thing that we are discussing today, that is the only thing we want to discuss. Nothing other than that. Yes, please. Nothing other than that. Thank you. Thank you. So we have four steps and answers. Nothing related to that. That is for getting PhD, not for here. But she's talking to get a PhD, not for here. I have my PhD already. Yes. 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 Yeah, everybody here. Too many people have PhD. Okay, so in the essence of time, I think we would like to continue and call Dr. Dwijan Bhattacharya to the floor. Is he here? He's a member of the Bangladesh Hindu Buddhist Christian Unity Council and a, and a professor himself. <coughs> Can you repeat the name and uh, position? Hello. Dr. Julian Bhattacharya. No, sure. Good morning. Mike, please. My name is Dejan. So you trust Columbia to my name. I teach there, but after an academic paper from a true human rights professor, it's very hard for me to talk. I am a human rights activist and not an academician here. I first salute any Indian here for rescuing us in 1971. You gave shelter to 10 million people. You are soldiers laid down their lives to make Bangladesh happen. I again salute you today for enacting the Indian Citizenship Act of 2019. I am, and many of my brothers and friends here, are direct beneficiaries of this magnanimous action on the part of India. I salute you. I salute you. I want to point out something, but the last, very last point, then I go to my point, if you give me like three minutes. I heard a lot of discussion about Rohingya Kashmir. Let me tell you something very humbly, if I may, Professor. There are 45 Islamic countries in the nation, in the world, and five Muslim majority nations. They can take care of the Muslim, persecuted Muslims. There is only 
very humbly presenting it. I have thought about this. There is only one Muslim Hindu majority country in the world, and in Nepal, but only India. Any Hindu anywhere in the world look up to India as their savior also. The roots of our religion, a myth, if you will, if you like, whatever it is, our culture, it all goes back to India. We Indians, we, we Hindus, wherever, wherever we may live in the world, we need a shelter to go to. This is exactly what, this is exactly what India has kindly done. My sister from Calcutta, well, I grew up as an SFI kind of person in Bangladesh, and our songs were We Shall Overcome and Bob Dylan. Many of you are. But look today, let's talk what is reality. I'm a realist. I'm not going to go Muslim bashing here. What the Muslims are as a religious group is well known, too well known to the world. You have seen what they have done in Nigeria two days ago, how many people they have slaughtered. Okay, having said that, let me divide my two minute, three minute speech into three parts. One, not in that order, Bangladesh Nationalist Party, BNP's Secretary General Mirza Fakhrul Alamgi recently challenged Honorable Amit Shah. So he challenged, he said that no minority persecution is happening in Bangladesh. <laughs> I will discuss this first and then talk about NRC for one minute. Again, it relates to Bangladesh in an interesting way. And then the Citizenship Act, one minute if I may. Mr. Alamgir, when your government came to power in Bangladesh in 2001, you celebrated your election victory by raping 200 Hindu girls. I have all the documents here. Anybody who wants it, these are all documented, and I'll provide them here. Okay. You celebrated your party's election victory. You partnered with Jamaat Islam, the Islamic Terrorist Party, and you celebrated your election victory by raping 200 Hindu girls in one night. Jana Kanto reported that the reported victims of, victims of rape, 98.7% of them are Hindus. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you another example here, and I hope Mr. Alamgir will get to hear this. Here is an example. In Chittagong Hill Tracks, on April 10, 1992, when his madam, Dagom Jia, the Islamic Nationalist Party of Bangladesh's chief was in power, and I am quoting from 17 U.S. congressmen wrote a letter to her in the aftermath of this incident, and that should suffice, Mr. Alamgir, the atrocities that you have conducted against the minorities of Bangladesh, forcing half of its population to leave the country after you, after with the help of India and Russia, Bangladesh was created a secular democracy. On that day, when the Chittagong Hindus, Adivasi people were preparing for celebrating their Baisavi, Baisavi Utshap, they call it, the event, the military forces cordoned off the entire village, it's called Logan, and then systematically, I'm quoting from that letter, systematically murdered every single person whose number is between 400 to 600. Bomb that's doing it to you. Thank you very much. Any questions for Dr. Nimajan? So, sir, you mentioned about, you know, uh, some kind of files, look, uh, file of food in international courts, but because the relationship between the India and, you know, Bangladesh would be at stake if government were to do that, is it possible for a forum to have a class action suit, maybe in US, I don't know if it falls under the jurisdiction or not, but otherwise, at least in some court where you get some attention in media. So what we need is first draw media attention. I don't think government of India would do that because of the relationship between Bangladesh and India, and obviously, you know, that can be at stake. But I think it would be good for the forum to look at that and find even a token food and then have a media talk about it. I'm going to answer that with a quote from Sir Winston Churchill. 
Sir Winston Churchill, even when India was still not an independent nation, said, while the Hindu elaborates on his arguments, the Muslim is sharpening his sword. <laughs> so, sir, what Sir Winston Churchill said at that time, we are still doing that. We don't have to worry. I, I may have said it in a very thing, but it's a very serious matter. By nature, we are reasonable people. We look at the reason and I say, forget the reason. Whether they act or not, that is their job. My conscience is clear. I raised my voice. I went out. I appealed to it. I don't give a damn what he does. I, I agree with you that that should still be done. But the chances of government of India filing a school will be very less. So it, as a secondary, is it possible for the forum to file any food in a court because that is needed to draw attention in media because sometimes the media doesn't pay attention but if there is in the court and there is few hearings and the matter is put in the court with evidence there will be some media attention. You gave me a very good thought in your discussion. Why not few Bangladesh is That's right true. here, right here while a suit in the United States court saying we have been deprived of this, this by Bangladeshi government and we file a suit against Bangladeshi government. That's what I mean. Okay. Very good thought and you gave me the thought, I just elaborated on it. Thank you so much. And you will get far more attention than all these hundreds of meetings we have. And Atalias and Kartaria Saab knows it better because when Congress filed a suit against them because they had the courage to say something, hundred million dollars, and we won it. We won it. We won it. Okay. And, and, and we were supported by the community yes. to fight the case. There's a lot of it. We didn't have to spend our own money. Community supported us. So let's file the suit and let's see what happens. Yes, and we can do crowdfunding for that if needed. Yes. There are attorneys who will be very happy to take it. Take an American attorney, I'm telling you, with the help of a Bengali attorney because he will add passion. An American attorney will bring attention. I don't have to say to you, when a white man files a suit in a white country, okay? okay. I'm, a, I'm an outright speaker, okay? I've been given death threats in the United States three times, okay? So this is nothing new to me, okay? And I'm still living, okay? Just to, add, just to add, I have been on the radio show for 10 years. I am on TV show right now for last one year, just Hindi. And you will be surprised when you get sad, you don't have to worry about it. When I was given sad, I call IBM, I, uh, I what called CBI, CBI <laughs> told me, and BI told me, don't worry about it. People just make nuisance, they are nuisance. We wa are watching everybody, so don't worry about it. You do what is right. And when you do something right, you don't worry about the, the results because Gita says very clearly, you have, your job is to do action only. You have, don't have to worry about the results. So let's not worry about the results. Let's do the things which are necessary to do. I appreciate that you people are here and it's time to take action, not just discussion. Exactly. And discussions are important, no doubt about it, but after discussion we should come up with some action plan and hope after this meeting some people will get together find some leadership among themselves and take some actions. And I think today's discussion, Dr. Cooker has given us a, a reasons to fight back. Because others are sharpening their knives. Now question is, do you want to be dead or do you want to be alive? Thank you, Dr. Cooker and Arishi for such passionate comments. Um, I would like to call now on Dilip Chakrabartiji the president of the North American Bengali Conference and the Cultural Association of Bengal. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, my friends, and uh, Mr. Shani and Professor Jodhuri and some of my old friends. It's, it's a very honoring for me to say a few words in this meeting 
I was I was asked by Mr. Choudhury a couple of days ago, and uh, I could make it. I'm so lucky that I met all of you, and I hear some of the pains. I hear some of the enthusiasms so far spoken by Dr. Tucker and Shahriji. I'll tell you a few things of my experience as a Hindu who was family was living in Bangladesh and I was when India was divided, I believe it was divided on the basis of two things on the religion and religion only. Hindus will live in Hindustan, which is now it is India, and Muslims will live in Pakistan, which is known, was known as East Pakistan and West Pakistan before now is East Pakistan became Bangladesh and West Pakistan remains Pakistan. So if that was done by the uh, Mahatma Gandhi leadership and Nehruji's support and our, uh, our Bengali leaders, they all wanted that way. So my question was very simple. When I was like three and four years old, one day some people came to our house, they were Muslims, and they said, they were, my father was known in the area as Thakurda, since we were Bengali Brahmins, we had a temple in the area, my father was very learned man, my grandfather, that was our tradition. So everybody used to tell my dad, Thakurda, they came and said, Thakurda, you have 24 hours to leave this place, and if you don't, we'll simply come and kill you. My question, when I was, my father took his suitcase and hold my hand and my sister's hand, my mother and my aunt, we were going into the train station, then I asked my dad, Baba, it means, Daddy, what happened? Why do I have to leave this place? My father said, you would understand it. Someday when you understand, try to help everybody who became like you today and who will become like you tomorrow. If you can bring a change into their lives, that will be the best thing you will be doing as a human being, as a Hindu, because Hindus is, is the most, most powerful and most valuable thing you are born in. Try to utilize it. So my question to all these things, all our Hindu brothers and Hindu sisters nowadays, whenever we see something is happening, Muslims are doing something, we just try to say, or not to see it, not to think about it. Whereas our gentleness is considered by the other party, in other words, Muslims, they think we are cowards. We don't have the strength to fight back, or we'll never, instead of fighting back, we'll never attack them, their atrocities. I'm not trying to attack them personally, their atrocities. That should be attacked all the times. And whenever you see any Hindu, any Hindu innocent person is being tortured or anything, please raise your voice because we have to speak up. If we don't speak up, nobody will understand our understand our pain, understand our destitute situation that we are in. So we must speak up and we must say to our God, God, thank you, you made me a Hindu, and I must carry your duty as a Hindu. That's all I, I want to say. And also, I want to say one other verse. Gita said, Ma faleshu kadachuna, means, Thalajjana bhabbuna, apni kachukuna, for God will give you. And she followed up for our Kodhikar day. That Odhikar remains to everybody. Thank you. Question. Any questions for him? Uh, I don't have any experience.
sorry, not a specific question. There is a rally at uh, 2 o'clock at Citizenship and uh, Support at uh, Times Square. Yeah. That is the venue we want to come out and say in public to people, this is what we suffered. I am a Bangladeshi Hindu. I am, my family was thrown out of uh, this place. For you to come and say that my family was thrown out, it's a very telling thing. I request people who are affected, their families affected, come there and say it. Just a simple placard, you know, a big placard. Say that, and that will go viral with the social media. This is a two o'clock at Times Square. Okay, I, I don't think if I would be able to go today, but in future, uh, if I come to know ahead of time, I'll definitely try to tell my stories and request all my friends to be with you guys. All right, you see. So what we'll do is we'll take down maybe the association's few members' names, you know, contact details. So we are, pl we are planning this really across the U.S., right? So it has happened in already 17 cities. We are doing it in New York City today. We'll share the details with you in turn. So even if it is happening in other cities, you will you will know. The Thank person you. who was talking, his name is Sastel, uh, uh, Dosha Pati, and he is very, very active. Like, I was sued for $100 million, he was also sued for $100 million, oh. and uh, he, he was, I was sued one time, he was sued two times, so now question is why he got sued, because when you fight, you always have reaction, but when you win, it gives you a lot of uh, courage to fight back also. So what he is doing is very remarkable. What uh, I think a lot of people who are sitting here, if they can take time out and join him on 2 o'clock, it would be a great thing actually. And I request everybody, if you are having not much work, please go and attend the program with him. And I hope he will give him some time to talk also. So now when we, when, uh, uh, we just heard about it, how people have suffered in Bangladesh, same thing happened to me. I was also three, four years old, and my father told me, you know who came to kill him? His own Muslim friend. Nobody else came to kill him. His own Muslim friend came to kill him and told him, now this time that I had killed you. My father said, hey, we are friends together for so many years. Why we have to kill each other? He said, no, now this is Islamic nation. You have no right to live here, and I have to kill you. My father backed him, and that's why I'm surviving today. And today, if you ask me, the most hated community in the world is only one. It's Muslims. And look at all the Muslims who have done to their own country. These, these are not real Muslims. Bangladeshi Muslims are not real Muslims. Pakistani Muslims are not real Muslims. The real Muslims are in Saudi Arabia. These are all converts. And who are these converts from? From Hinduism, Buddhism. Now these converts are destroying their own nation. Look what they have done to Iraq. What they have done to Syria. What they have done to Libya. These are all converted people. They are not real Muslim people. Real Muslim people converted them to destroy themselves, to destroy their own race. And these people don't know what's happening to them and what they are doing actually. So we need some good writers, and hopefully some writer will educate them, inform them, hey, you are destroying yourself, your own race, own culture, and look at the other people who converted you. They are enjoying, they are having a good time. So the question is, some information is uh, not going out properly, and maybe it is a duty as a 21st era to educate people, inform people what is right and what is wrong. And hopefully this happens soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's an active member in the community. He, he is so active, I can tell you one thing. I, all, I spent a couple of months in Calcutta during the last six, seven years. I was in a meeting, Hindu Samadhi meeting in the planetary of Calcutta. And then, after that I got a call. And who, I got the call from South India, who has got no business in Calcutta. And I found him in the stage of Hindu Samadhi in this planet. I said, yes, yes, I'm in the meeting, but why do you want me? He said, I'm here. And then I look at upstairs and it is he. In the Chorogi area, big stage, some 30,000 people are there. I was invited and went there. And I was thinking of going, not walking up the big, quite high that thing is. And he was already there. And then, and the whole thing is that he wants to be part of the Hindu resurgence. That if you do not work for yourself, 
when nobody is there to save him. God will not save them who is not helping themselves. And so you will say a couple of minutes for him. This is a, a, a big chance, and he's coming from a long distance. He lives in uh, India, New York City. Uh, namaste. I live in uh, Marlboro, New Jersey. Um, I've been um, Naran Kataria ji is our guru. Uh, um, I think I cried as much as his family cried when he passed away. And uh, so I just want to say that uh, um, we, uh, Hinduism is a is a religion is the only religion that is available today in the world that speaks for inclusiveness. Uh, that speaks for the major religion that speaks for us and it is a worth of protecting. It is one of the most scientific religion we have in the world. And if we lose it, it's not just a loss to us, it's a loss to the humanity. When you look at what is going on with the Christian says our God is the only God, Muslim says our God is the only God. And he, uh, But uh, even Buddhism also doesn't say that. Ours is the only religion which says that every form of worship, no matter what you call, like Sadhguru says, our country is not a religious, it's a country of seekers. Every god is, uh, in many form you have, is that is why for the, the for what is going on in the world, Hinduism is the best answer we have. And it is the most scientific religion. Everything, I mean, you look at, I mean, most people are only look at the virtue of uh, rituals, but behind everything in Hinduism, there is so much sense behind it. And even now they are exploring what it is. Uh, so we uh, we were uh, um, we have we have been active for last ten years with the Kataria ji, Pavitra ji, and all. And, uh, Supporting, BJP. supporting also, we also support uh, Narendra Modi ji and uh, uh, BJP. In fact, my wife went, uh, she took a three weeks vacation uh, last year, this year vacation and did campaigning in the villages in uh, in Karnataka. So, so we all have to do it. There are so many people who have done it and uh, we all have to do it. And that's the only way we are going to make change. But I just want to you know, understand what is going on in the world today. Why is Western media talk so against, uh, in spite of so much uh, violence against the Hindus, the New York Times, Washington Post, they talk against, they don't even have any words to, positive words to say about uh, what Modi ji and Amit Shah has done, just giving relief. And uh, we have to understand, there is a, in this, uh, in the West especially, the Christian fundamentalist, the missionaries, wants to use, wants to use uh, this uh, Hindu-Muslim thing to divide, just like they did in Rwanda. They want to divide and create, speak up the, as if Hindus are the most atrocious people and Muslims are the victims. They are playing it up just for the sake of conversion. Because any time if you look at South America and Rwanda or any other countries, what they do is they go to the place, look at the differences, uh, the fault lines. I, I hope some of you heard Rajiv Malhotra's uh, um, Breaking India. So there is a complex of uh, missionary forces, Islamic forces, uh, trying to divide India, break India. And so please make sure, today there is a beautiful article by my colleague uh, Arvind Kumar that came on uh, USCIRF. They are the, uh, all the time they keep uh, uh, attacking Hindus and uh, India. So just be informed what is going on. Just don't take what New York Times says. But most importantly, if somebody comes and says, uh, my family was driven out, for example, right, I was saying earlier, and driven out to stand in a placard in a meeting, it has go. It has a potential to go all over the world instantly. So you have to come out of your nest, come out and uh, speak. That is very, very important. You can talk here in a closet here and we can do it, but you go out the social media instantly, you can, millions and billions of people can see. So if you are affected family, we request you to come to the Times Square. We have empty placards and your family, say my family was affected. And my, this is what happened in my family, it matters. So please speak up and uh, this world is the uh, only way we can save this uh, humanity today is, whether they want to call it Hinduism or not, it is the principles of Hinduism is going to save this world. Again, I mean, I, I do up in here, I'm from Kolkata, but in general, I 
think, you know, there are a couple of things, you know, I mean, I've been listening to lots of problems with people here. Um, a couple of things. We've always said Hinduism is inclus inclusion, right? And I think, like, for example, if you look at Barney Sanders, right, um, he's very much a proponent, well, he's been speaking against Hinduism, right? Now, the reason is why, okay, first of all, we have fundamental problems within India, meaning it's not a problem, we have many different languages. So there's always the translations and all that and plays a major role why it doesn't transmit right away. As opposed to the Muslims, you know, in communication role, they still use the Arabic language. What is your question? So my note, my main, my main question, what I'm trying to say, it's not a question, I'm making a comment, is that the many, any time, you know, I think we have to get politicians and even there are Muslims, actually, that are in favor of, and they know the story, like Dr. Rajwan, I think, in India, he speaks, you know, he actually in favor of Modi, and he basically says, you know, we have to approach people also like that. Let me tell you. We cannot say Islam. Let, and let, that me, tell, let me tell you something. They are in this world for one reason. They have their goals. They know how to achieve their goals. They know how to fool people. Question is, you should ask question yourself. 1500 years back, Islam came. Before that, Christ was there 2500 years. Now you ask question, people before 2500 years, who were they? What happened to those people? What happened to that history? You should ask this question to yourself no, no, and I, ask those people too. No, listen, so, I'm not no, no. I'm talking about... No, no, then before you talk, you should know, when we say the Hindu religion is the only religion inclusive, you have to understand that first. Once you understand, then you have to see what others are... Acha, I am from Trinidad and Tobago, West Indies. I'm an archaeologist and researcher on ancient history and Indo-European civilizations. I've been involved in the Hindu Students Association and with the Hindu community for many years, including trying to get Diwali as a holiday in New York City. So without further ado, I'd like to open this gathering of the Indian American Intellectuals Forum and the Bangladesh Hindu Coalition on our open discussion and talks on secularism and the Citizenship Amendment Act, which was recently passed in India. And we have a lot of wonderful speakers here today, um, scholars uh, in New York City and um, acclaimed individuals who are here to address us. And uh, they have, uh, before I start, they have six minutes to speak and three minutes of open discussion and talk. And if we could keep within that time frame, would be lovely. Um, so first up, I would like to introduce you all to the president of the Indian American Intellectuals Association, Ari Sahani Ji. He is a community leader and activist in New York and US, and he has taken over from the wonderful and larger than life Nareen Kataria Ji, whom we all remember and are friends with. What a wonderful man. And so without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Arish Ji, who has been doing so much for us in New York City over so many decades. Thank you. Namaskar. Before I start, I want to recite Gayatri Mantra. I hope everybody knows Gayatri Mantra. I hope everybody sitting here is a Hindu by his ancestors. So now let's say, Oh, 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 and now we do Gayatri Mantra about three times. Om Bhul Bhaswa Tasa Vita Vareniyam Bhargo Deva Sude Dhimai Dhyoyona Pachodayat Om Bhul Bhaswa Tasa Vita Vareniyam Bhargo Deva Sude Dhimai Dhyoyona Om Bhubhaswa Tasarika Reniya Bhargo Deva Sudev Dhi Mai Dio Yona Pacho Deya Bharat Mata Ki Jai Bharat Mata Ki Jai Bharat Mata Ki Jai It's an honor to sit, stand here and talk to you on a very simple, basic thing. Indian American Intellectual Forum was formed by Mr. Nayan Kadaria, me, Chad Chaudhary, and M.G. Prashad. Katariji is not here, Dr. M.G. Prashad is not here, but me as a president 
and Chaudhary as the vice president, and you are all the members of uh, Indian American Intellectual Forum just by attending this program. So you should feel the part of this Indian American Intellectual Forum. So the question is why we are gathered here, and why these meetings are important. I think the meetings are very important when people get together, they start feeling about each other. Now when you sit here, sit with each other, you connect to each other, then love and respect develops automatically. So these meetings are very, very important, and we should thank Chaudhary for this, because he initiated this idea that we should get together, and we should, even 50 people come, 40 comes, doesn't matter, let's get together. And I want to thank Chaudhary Ji for taking the initiative. We have been conducting Indian Hindu Unity Day for the last 22 years. And we have been very successful because of only one reason, because we have Dr. Subraman Swami as our chief guest every time. And every time he comes here, we arrange the program, and it becomes a success. And he's the only one we know he is for Hindus, because he talks clearly and point to the point. And I think we should all watch what he says, when he says, where he says. He's always on the YouTube. And I request all of you, if you have not watched him, please do that. So that will be my request to you. Now coming to today's point, it's very simple. Everybody knows what CA is there. I'm not going to describe it at all. So what I'm going to tell you, I have some questions. And hopefully, these questions will make you understand why, what we should be doing. <coughs> To ask you some questions. You call yourself human beings, you are educated, you know how to get information, you, are, you call yourself Hindu, you belong to the oldest culture of world, you know other civilization perished, you know your civilization still exists because this civilization has been birth of many great souls who brought new thoughts and reform. You know you have a, an enemy. You know these facts, your enemy has a very clear goal. You know your enemy lives around you. You know enemy plants. You are the people who are, who are people who are bad. Do you ever told them that they are bad? If not, why not? Do you have a leader? Do you like him or her? What you can do for them? Do you, do you know the history of Islam? Do you know the history of Christian? Do you know how and when local Do you know how many millions died to resist? So do you know the history of Christian? Do you know how and when local got converted to their cultures? Do you see any control of your your when and where you will you will, uh, uh, when will you raise it? You know there is no one like you in this world. You know you are unique, but you know today what you do to your, what you do affects your surrounding. If you are good, if you are good, thanks to your parents and to your company, now you can see what happening to the world around you. Why I'm asking this question? Because these are the questions should come in everybody's mind. If you don't have these questions in your mind, you will not get up and do anything. So the, the whole idea of putting this question was not to give you details of what CA is there. Don't, I don't want to tell you what's happening in India, what Islam is doing, what Krishna is doing. You should know, ask this question to yourself, and from this question, you should initiate yourself knowledge. This 21st century is a century of information. Everything is available on the fingerprints. It's very, I feel sometimes very ashamed. All the people who converted in the last 1500 years or 2500 years have all the information to know what happened to the people who converted and who didn't convert it. And it's time that they should understand, go to the Google, search what their forefathers were there, why they converted, and why they're still uh, following the same culture, why they can convert and change themselves. Today, if you see in America, we have many good souls came in this country. We have Mr. We have ISKCON organization, started by Prabhupada, who was at age 60, came in this country. Look what he has done, miracle. Only with one reason, 
he brought some message, message of non-violence, not on violence, but also devotion, yoga, meditation, and uh, loving each other, giving food, free food. So all these good things, we have it. Why we Hindus are not doing anything? Well, we can do a lot. Now, why we are not doing anything? Because we are not united. Why we are not united? We don't know the reason. Maybe we don't have leaders. Maybe we have leaders, but they don't know what to do. So all this meeting, what we're doing is to bring, I'm putting this question in your mind, so you should ask yourself, hey, is my, what is my life is all about? Today we have been told as Hindu that you should always ask this question to yourself. Why I'm born? What I'm doing in this earth? What are my goals? And where I'll go after, the, after I'm dead? You all know that today whatever we have belongs to somebody else. As per the, as per uh, our uh, uh, Gita, and whatever we have will, will belong to somebody else, and it will go to somebody else in the future. We come with nothing, go with nothing. The question is, what we are doing in this country, what we are doing in this world, we should be very careful about it. You should bless yourself first, and you should be proud of yourself for one thing, that you are born Hindu. To be born Hindu is a privilege. So it's very important. Hello, sir. You can keep that back, sir. Just take it. Yeah, okay. We don't need it. So it's very important, we should be proud of ourselves that you are born as a Hindu. As you are born Hindu, the question is what is your goal and what is your responsibility? You know today, few cultures are hated. Hated so badly, not only the hated, hated actually, whoever has converted in Middle East, Africa, look at their life, look at your life. What is the difference? People who are converted, look at the Middle East, how the Middle East, Middle East has been destroyed. Look at the people who are converted living in Bangladesh and Pakistan. They want to come to India. They don't want to live there. Even though they are converted, but they have no reason to live there. So we should be very happy and proud of our culture, and we should go out and promote our culture one way or another. People who are converted, they have no, they, they want to come back, but we are not asking them to come back. Why are you not asking them to come back? Because if you look around, there are 56 Islamic nations, 100 Christian nations, not a single Hindu nation. So this CA came with the idea that okay, all the Hindus who are persecuted should be allowed to come to India and get citizenship. It was a very good idea. But it seems like that this idea was not accepted by the people who got converted. So we have to teach them, inform them, and I hope this session of ours, hope the people who are sitting here will go with the message and these questions which I have just told, there are a lot more questions are there. Maybe I'll come back and talk about those questions in the future. So in the meantime, I want to thank everybody who has come here. Please go with the message very clearly. Be proud of yourself and to know what you are here for and what you can do for the country. For every country, you need leaders. And if you have a leader, you should know how to support it. Without leaders, you are nothing. If you are a leader, if you don't support it, then you are nothing also. So you should know, today we have good leaders in India. BJP government is in the power. After so many years, they have majority, but the majority can be lost if you don't support them. So I hope and request everybody, if you are Hindu, if you should work for Hinduism, you should work for your future generation. Your future generation will survive only if you do something. Like our forefather, our Sikh Guru, uh, sacrifice themselves to see that we Hindus survive. So it is our duty for our children and grandchildren to see we sacrifice ourselves. Maybe money, maybe time, whatever it is, to make sure that our civilization is surviving. So I'm very happy to see that you are all here. So I thank and back to Nishan. Thank you, Harish um, so uh, just just a reminder, in order to have these things, it's, we are always welcoming small donations. Um, please enjoy the tea and refreshments and the snacks provided by the organizations. Um, we will have the talks now, and then from 1 to 2 p.m. we will go to lunch. Um, right now I would like to introduce Dr. Narinda Kukar, who is an, a very accomplished physician in the community and a lead activist in the, amongst the Hindus for the last 40 years.
Thanks very much. Thanks, Pavitra, who I know has been working for this community for the last maybe more than 35 or 40 years that I know of. I'm not a Bengali. I don't look from Bengal, okay? Uh, but some or other, I think that revolutionary spirit of Bengal seemed to have seeped into me. I do not know whether because of association with these guys or Manoranjan Datta, who was a professor at Rutgers University and one of my mentors. <clears throat> anyway, the point we really have today is what is life like living in Pakistan or Bangladesh, let's stay to Bangladesh, for non-Muslims. You know, I am an outsider in a way. I don't live in Bangladesh. My family is not there. I am not uprooted. I am from Punjab. And fortunately, when the partition took place, my hometown came within India. And the border from my hometown is only three miles. So it's a stroke of luck that you know I am within India. I was a little kid, okay? All I knew is how people were crossing into Pakistan and the trains are coming from Pakistan with dead bodies. Not live bodies, they were dead bodies. But I was not allowed to go, I was too little. The point we're really making today is when any nation works and gives shelter to the oppressed, that nation is complimented, that nation is appreciated by the world. Here, India has gone out of its way. After almost a lapse of 50 years of suffering of Bangladeshi Hindus, Sikhs, and other minorities, and it is being ridiculed in the West, and it is being even agitated against by some of the Indians in India. That is because none of us spread what went on and what you all suffered from or your family when you came. I was amazed that one of my own colleagues, whom I know for 15 years plus, it's only yesterday that I found out what he went through when he was a little kid, how he hid in the sari of her mother, and how he walked for four or five days to come to India. Because we don't talk about it. If we don't talk about it, how will anybody know what we went through? Okay? It is the first time yesterday that I learned from a Kashmiri, and I have Kashmiri friends for the last 50 years. I've been in this country for about 50, Three years? 53 years? Sorry, it disclosed my age, okay? I could have otherwise said I'm much younger than that. Okay? <laughs> but just to say, and he told me that from the Muslim masjid, it wasn't namaz that was coming. The message coming was, leave your daughters and go. Are you with me? leave your daughters and go. And that was the message. Okay? So they just left with their children. The, the question at this time is not that. This community, the Bengali community, minorities, in Bangladesh have been suffering for more than 1971, and this is about 48 years. And, and Senator Kennedy, in 1971, has recorded on November 1st, 1971, that the Hindu community has been suffering in Bangladesh for the last so many years, and he used straight words, which we don't use. I do, but most of you don't, I think have been massacred, have been gruesomely killed. And this has been written in Wall Street Journal as far back as 1985, has been written in Time Magazine as far back as 2001, today it's 2019, that's 18 years ago. And has been reported by the Canadian Human Watch Group from 2001 to 2007. 
and there have been delegation from the United States Congress to Bangladesh. Am I right? And Pobitra was there when the delegation went. I do not know whether you went there or not, but I did not. Because if I had gone there, you wouldn't be seeing me alive here now. I would be also gone. Okay? Because that's what is the culture, unfortunately, of this. So what can we do? There are a few things as Bengalis and Bangladeshis you can do. Okay? That is, whether you write an open letter, taking even a small advertisement in your local paper, sending a petition to the Prime Minister, saying all Bangladeshi, Hindus, and minorities who have been made to leave their country, we need restitution and monetary compensation for the property we left behind. We, Bangladeshi, and you have records of it, the record is published in one of the books that some of you published, and it is published from within the United States, New York. I will be able to give you that number, the address of that book, okay? Later on in the discussion, I have it written. And the next item you can request them is that those people who were responsible for committing these crimes, they should be prosecuted and charged with crimes. Personally, not generic government of Bangladesh. No government of Bangladesh. Abdul Hazan or Abdul Khan or Yahya Khan, these are the three responsible people in this area. They were the police commissioner and they ordered this, 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 and they should be charged with crime. Third thing, where you could all say to the government, of India, because nobody else will listen to you, to say, we need this issue to be raised in the international court of faith. No time to sit back and just react. Time to act. There's a big difference between reaction and action. Reaction is you're just trying to save yourself. Action is you say, here you go, okay? And it is time to do that. We, by nature, are gentle, but our gentleness should not be considered that we are coward. And that is where it is. It is time to speak and call a spade a spade. There are so many, my own highly educated friends and others, they have no idea what happened to Bangladeshi Hindus, whether their daughters were raped or not. Are you all aware that they have raped wives in presence of their husband and children? Yes. Did you see it in any newspapers in the United States, even Indian newspapers? What the hell happened? Are we dead? Or are we idiots? Or we are combined, both of them. Why isn't there? Somebody comes and rapes my neighbor's daughter, and I don't speak about it. Forget about my own daughter. So if you don't speak, how will people know? If I were you, if I were you, I would even take a ad in the local Bengali newspaper saying, this is what has happened. And when the government of India gives me time, and the government of India gives us this opportunity to come back, it is a God-given gift to save these human beings from the clutches of Islam. Call the word as it is. Don't mince words. Don't say Bangladeshi government. Say the word. It's not Bangladeshi government. It is Islam. Hello, my name is Vincent Bruno, and uh, I'm from Justice for Hindus. Um, I support CIA because uh, a few years ago, back in 2016, I went and visited the Hindu refugee camps in Delhi. These are Hindus who escaped the Islamic State of Pakistan and came to India seeking refuge. 
There were a lot of small children in that camp. There were a lot of women, families, and they were starving. They had no commodities. You can find these camps in other areas of India, but what you're not going to find in India is Muslim refugee camps. There are no Muslim refugee camps because there are no Muslim refugees. CAA addresses a problem that's there, a real problem. Muslims don't need CAA. They, they, don't, they can stay in Pakistan if they want. They can stay in Bangladesh or Afghanistan if they want. Hindus don't have that option. So we need to do something that addresses that issue specifically. And CAA does that. It addresses the specific issue of Hindu asylum seekers in the state of India. And it's because of what I saw in those refugee camps. That's why I support CAA. So this is Diren Mehta from OF BJP. I am from New Jersey and had great opportunity to come here and attend this uh, wonderful session by the forum here, Intellectuals Forum of Indian American. Uh, generally, the intellectual world is associated with those who give the title to themselves, but they are very leftist and extremist. This intellectual forum is actually talking about the idea where they are listening to others and are actually talking about the true issues and facts. The topic here today was talking about the secularism and how CAA is actually to preserve the secularism and the India's tradition of giving shelter to those who are persecuted. And that was a great discussion here. Thanks to the association here and those who organized this. I believe we should have this more often so that the people understand the issues. Thanks a lot. My name is, Indi My name is Arish Kumar Sahani. I'm a president of Indian American Intellectual Forum. We have been doing a Hindu Unity Day celebration for the last 22 years. It's time that India should be declared as a Hindu nation. It's time that Hindus should get united. It's time that what's going wrong should be corrected. It's time the BJP should remain in the power for next 10 years or 20 years. It's time that Hindus should feel that if India is not there, he has no existence. The CAA bill has done a wonderful thing in inspiring Hindus to be united. I hope this goes on. Modi has the Mumkin hai. Let's pray for Modi's long life and long life of India and Sanatan Dal. Dhanyavad. Sitaram, I'm Nisharam Racha. I'm an archaeologist. I'm from the Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago. And uh, today's event was about secularism and a citizen citizenship amendment act that was recently passed in India. And I think this is a great thing by Modi ji because Hindus are being persecuted and they have nowhere to go and he has provided them a place to go. So, you know, as a Caribbean Hindu, this means a lot to me. Hi, my name is Vishwaji Chakravorty. I am the representative overseas friend of Bengal BJP. And uh, as you know, we are involved in Bengal politics very much. And the CAA is very much applicable to the Bengal. But the, what is CAA actually, as you know, we support it because it is not to take anybody's citizenship. It is giving the citizenship. There is a pause, except the Muslim who have been illegal, illegally entered to the, our Bengal from the three neighboring countries, Afghan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and Pakistan, after 71. Is it a discrimination? No, not at all. Because the act clearly says that the non-Muslim who have been tortured, humiliated, raped, killed, in the three Islamic countries, Islamic countries. So any Muslim belongs to these three Islamic countries. There is no chance that they will be humiliated for the religious purpose. So the Muslims are out. But it is equally beneficial to the existing Muslim of India and who are recent India and all the citizens. Why it is so late? Why Modi ji is bringing this issue? Because this is a burning issue since independence. But nobody said about that. They simply encase this issue. Being a Bengali, I know the Congress, CPM, TMC, they use, they encase this issue. They said it is just some skin disease, it will be okay, but not. It is a cancer. Modi ji is the first person who said it is a cancer and you need the chemotherapy. We are passing through that chemotherapy, which is painful, but the end of that, we'll get a healthy India back, which is equally beneficial to any Indians, irrespective to any religious. So we support this one and we will be most beneficial from that. Once again, it is Vishwajit from 
overseas friend of Bengal. I'm a very close person. Uh, person is uh, keeping touch with the Bengal. Bij the last ready, who is the OF BJP youth convener, who came from Edison, New Jersey. He's just going to speak quickly. <laughs> Uh, namaste. My name is Vilas Reddy, overseas friends of BJP, National Youth co convener uh, Special thanks to Indian American Intellectual Forum because uh, to open discussion about secularism, what is CAI, many speakers have gave wonderful suggestions. These discussions should go to the social media. Whatever discussion in this room, it should go to the outside of the media. So other than America, we have, should Social media. Social media, we can inform to other countries what is CAA, what is uh, Modi is doing. And uh, many times the intellectual words comes always communists are coming, universities, and they will give the lectures, they will talk about uh, all negatives of India. So we need to, en we need to encounter from this Indian American Intellectual Forum. Now onwards, it should open for forum always. So all the show off is needed in future also. And uh, I am from Hyderabad, uh, Telangana. You know the famous word uh, Telangana, Hyderabad means you remember one name. is the MIM, OIC. I know. Those are under the present government TRS, Telangana Rashtra Samiti government in Telangana. They are not supporting for CAA. Because of, in Hyderabad, you know, 50 lakhs, Sorry, 50,000 undocumented, I mean, documented Rohingyas are in Hyderabad. Oh, wow. So, that is the documented, and the undocumented are double or like four, five times. Because you know, right, the one Muslim family can 10 or 20 people come. So, that is a documented 50,000 Rohingyas in Hyderabad. We don't know undocumented. So, that's why they are voting or appeasement they are doing. So we are now next West Bengal, the Telangana is the critical problem. So what is the next target is BJP government should form in West Bengal. After that in Telangana we are targeting. There's a next upcoming elections, West Bengal and Telangana, BJP will form. So now my request is all we need to support CAA, what is the Citizen Amendment Act. Today we are doing a Times Square 2 o'clock, all Indian American community with along with OABJP. So we have once this session done, please come to the Times Square. It is uh, 20 minutes from here, uh, 2 o'clock. Please join and please support. Thank you. Thanks a lot, all the team. Convener who came from Edison, New Jersey. He's just going to speak quickly. Uh, namaste. My name is Vilas Reddy, overseas friends of BJP, National Youth Co Convener. Uh, special thanks to Indian American Intellectual Forum because uh, to open discussion about secularism, what is CAA, many speakers have gave wonderful suggestions. These discussions should go to the social media. Whatever discussion in this room, it should go to the outside of the media. So other than America, we have should social media, we can inform to other countries what is CAA, what is uh, Modi is doing. And uh, many times the intellectual words comes always communists are coming, universities, and they will give the lectures, they will talk about uh, all negatives of India. So we need to we need to encounter from this Indian American Intellectual Forum. Now onwards, it should open for forum always. So all the show off is needed in future also. And uh, I am from Hyderabad, uh, Telangana. You know the famous word uh, Telangana, Hyderabad means you remember one name. is the MIM, OIC. I know. Those are under the present government TRS, Telangana Rashtra Samiti government in Telangana. They are not supporting for CAA. Because of, in Hyderabad, you know, 50 lakhs, sorry, 50,000 undocumented, I mean, documented Rohingyas are in Hyderabad. So, that is the documented, and the undocumented are double or like four, five times. Because you know, right, the one Muslim family can 10 or 20 people come. So, that is the documented 50,000 Rohingyas in Hyderabad. 
we don't know undocumented so that's why they are voting or appeasement they are doing so we are now next west bengal the telangana is the critical problem so what is the next target is bjp government should form in west bengal after that in telangana we are targeting there's a next upcoming elections west bengal and telangana bjp will form so now my request is all we need to support caa what is the citizen amendment act today we are doing a time square 2 o'clock all indian american community with along with oapjp so we have once this session done please come to the time square it is 20 minutes from here uh, two o'clock please join and please support thank you thanks a lot all the team repeat what dr bartsu said here has already discussed what i am going to emphasize on is the is the caa caa is in my view is giving a residency for the victims of atrocities victims of persecution which is just like asylum law in us it it compares to that if you are victim if you have uh, if you are afraid of your life you leave the country you take, you can ask for an asylum in us same thing is happening in india it is nothing more than that those who are persecuted because of religion or other region they can uh, have this kind of uh, citizenship or a legal residency in india in that i, mean, I would like to say, say which nobody has mentioned india uh, needs to look at its demographic change because culture is associated with the country country and omit shaji and all of us and here i forgot to say indian intellectual forum is a witness to all that happened to us for 30 35 years we have been doing it i would love to name names here the narendra kokar ji shahani ji pavitra they are all here but i i don't want to go into that i just want to spend one more second on the nrc i think i have covered the other one nrc they're making a big deal nrc is very difficult and by doing nrc government of india will deny citizenship to the true citizens muslim citizens of india the answer is this is an unequivocal no to this it's a complete falsehood look at bangladesh in india first of all nrc began in 1951 i think that citizenship act of 19 after the census it's a continued process because the assam is don't want any hindus in their country citing homogeneity I mean, they're losing their cultural homogeneity linguistic homogeneity etc it's an internal matter of india and i don't want to dwell on this but look at bangladesh how easy it is to do an nrc first of all every country has the right to have a list of who its citizens are and who are not particularly at this time you don't want any unknown people in your country who 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 is not a citizen there illegally because they can do all kinds of they can wreck havoc cause mischief in india my final word if bangladesh could do an rc in 2006 july and they produced an nid national id card in order to receive 22 kinds of services, including passport, including all kinds of things, I, I can name on and on. You need that NID. You cannot do anything without an NID. Why is it so difficult for the Muslims of India, my Muslim brothers of India, to prove that they are son of the soil or their parent soil? Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm so happy that you... Mr. Dujan Bhattacharya. Good morning. Mike, please. Mike, please. My name is Dujan. So you attached Columbia to my name. I teach there, but after an academic paper from a true human rights professor, 
it's very hard for me to talk. I am a human rights activist and not an academician here. I first salute any Indian here for rescuing us in 1971. Pranam Namaste. You gave shelter to 10 million people. You are soldiers laid down their lives to make Bangladesh happen. I again salute you today for enacting the Indian Citizenship Act of 2019. I am, and many of my brothers and friends here, are direct beneficiaries of this magnanimous action on the part of India. I salute you. I salute you. I want to point out something, but the last, very last point, then I go to my point if you give me like three minutes. I heard a lot of discussion about Rohingya Kashmir. Let me tell you something very humbly, if I may, Professor. There are 45 Islamic countries in the nation, in the world, and five Muslim majority nations. They can take care of the Muslim, persecuted Muslims. There is only very humbly presenting it. I have thought about this. There is only one Muslim Hindu majority country in the world and in Nepal, but only India. Any Hindu anywhere in the world look up to India as their savior also. The roots of our religion, a myth, if you will, if you like, whatever it is, our culture, it all goes back to India. We Indians, we, we Hindus, whoever, wherever we may live in the world, we need a shelter to go to. This is exactly what this is exactly what India has kindly done. My sister from Calcutta. Well, I grew up as an SFI kind of person in Bangladesh, and our songs were "We Shall Overcome" and Bob Dylan. Many of you are. But look today, let's talk what is reality. I'm a realist. I'm not going to go Muslim bashing here. What the Muslims are as a religious group is well known, too well known to the world. You have seen what they have done in Nigeria two days ago, how many people they have slaughtered. Okay, having said that, let me divide my two minute, three minute speech into three parts. One, not uh, I made it very clear that I would like democratic questions from audience. Uh, uh, and this is not the forum for this. It's okay, it's okay. Now you are still. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. This is not the class. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Ma'am, I have a question. Ma'am, I have a question. Yes. I have a question. Sure. So, so, I have a question. This is not the forum for Ma Sir, we got that message. Ma'am, I have a question. So, yes, you are taking the human rights issue and maybe Rohingya is yes. a good human rights issue from a perspective, maybe. <laughs> is it because that gets more media attention? Because there are, I, I, let me complete my yes. question. Mm -hmm. There are many countries where because of the state religion, Yes. Minorities have been persecuted. Right. Rohingya is not the only unique. Sure. There are other countries where big, the state religion uh -huh. has enforced oh. atrocities. Right? So, so, so my question is. Uh, we, my question. We have to concentrate in the. I, I know. I'm just subject to the. I'm setting a stage because, yeah. Let me complete my question. So, there is a very unique, there is a very unique phenomena only that you find in India where despite the Predominant, and I would not use state religion, but a predominant Portia, religion being Portia, Hindu, being Hindu, the Hindus have been persecuted. The Hindus have been persecuted in Kashmir. It's a very unique. There are many such things. Why can't we? Why can't we have someone take up that? and make a human rights issue out of that. Right. So I do want to say that I work on genocides anywhere, and Kashmir is an important issue for me. I started working with the Guatemala genocide. And the, you know, I work on genocide issues irrespective of how it is happening. This is a very unique example, because there are, you will find genocide as it. This is the only example where 80% 
majority and yet they are persecuted by minority. I think that's a very unique example you see in why that happens. Sorry, sorry. One second. If anyone can talk about the present thing that we are discussing today, that is the only thing we want to discuss. Nothing other than that. Yes, please. Nothing other than that. So we have questions and answers. That is for getting PhD, not for here. What she is talking to get a PhD. I have my PhD already. Um, I would like to. Uh, is because that's that's one of my key training because I started working um, on human rights issues at uh, during uh, uh, when I was working on the Guatemala genocide and currently I am working on the Rohingya genocide and the uh, refugee crisis. Uh, yes, but I do want to position myself because I just saw what happened. Um, okay, so, um, and you know, I'm very open to questions, so please do not hesitate to ask questions if you disagree with me or if you agree with me, I'm absolutely open and I will stand by for the audience if you have a disagreement with me. Okay, so, um, my very brief talk is called, What Does Democracy Look Like? Vandalism as an Obstacle to Conflict Resolution in a Democracy. In my brief talk today, I want to raise the key issue of conflict resolution in the Indian democracy today. The Greek root of the word democracy, oh, which is a combination of demos and kratia, translates as people's, people rule or rule by the people. However, the question that has, uh, that has been brought up again and again in the current Indian context is who are the people? However, if we accept this contestation over the definition of democracy in India today, it is important to understand that on the ground, any kind of political dialogue that the opposition wants to have with the government has to keep democracy front and center in its discussion. No matter how many philosophers have argued that in its ideal form, democracy can also become anarchy. The pragmatic demands today, despite all the reasons the people or demos has for or against the establishment is that their representatives, uh, no matter what, the, what their uh, arguments for or against, uh, at the heart of a resolution is the ability of the demos of the people to sit with the government for negotiation and dialogue. Vandalism and destruction of state property might send a message to the establishment about the anger of that part of the demos, which is opposed to the policies of the government, but it is not the most astute or wise way to pave the way for getting to the negotiation table for, the di for a dialogue with the government. Credibility is key here, no matter how conservative that argument sounds. Now, I also want to address the issue of media and democracy. When, when we, uh, both in the United States and um, in India, when, when we had constitutional protection for the freedom of the press, we were not talking in a world where social media was prevalent. Now, what, what it has become is we have a lot of independent journalists um, in social media. And what we need to also be aware, and I go back to the issue of credibility of the opposition, if, and I'm here playing the devil's advocate and talking about if, even if we do not agree with the opposition, by virtue of the fact that we are claiming ourselves to be you know, connected overseas with the democracy of India, we need to understand where uh, 
the freedom of press lies in an environment of social media. Do we distribute as activists, whether in favor of the establishment or against the establishment, as independent journalists who are also activists, do we take pictures of other kinds of congregation happening in other parts of the world and submit it on uh, social media and say, this is the level of opposition in India. India. Because that is fake news, right? And I'm, ha I'm sitting on Facebook and I'm seeing people having to pull down those pictures. Either way, vandalism or the kind of fake news that is being circulated, it does not lead to credibility. And at the heart of the rule of the people, you know, whether it is for pragmatic reasons or whether it is for idealistic reasons, if they even want to get to the table to sit with the establishment, there has to be credibility. And I'm going to end with that. And you know, I do uh, want to open this up for a democratic dialogue. Yes. What I mean by Rohingya genocide. Um, so what I'm looking at is the the and I, I you know I, I cannot you know in the few minutes that I have for Q and A I can't talk about the entire history, but you know I can take your answers after that. But very briefly, I'm really talking about the the kind the kind of state religion, the Buddhism as a state religion that has been propagated. Yeah. Yes. Yes, absolutely. You're right. You're absolutely. No. No. Uh, you're right. Yeah. There has been. Um, I don't know whether this platform really gives me that scope to address the Rohingya issue. I agree. But we are also talking about state power in this kind of a situation. One more question. I, I, I have a question. <laughs> question from you. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, ma'am. I have a question. Sure. Why we are talking about Rohingyas now? We are in danger. Well, that is another thing. Can you really sit in the United States and hold dictate on, what on. can research? You are asking me a question. I think no, I need to no, finish. What you're talking in US, I'm not talking to We are sitting in US talking about the problem back home in India. Yes. Rohingya is not a part of India. That's correct. Now, 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 this is not, this is no, very discourteous. I, I, no, not discourteous. We don't have the problem. No, issues. we, we talk about We are here right now We want to save India. We yeah. want to save Hindu. We are not here to save Hindu. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. That's okay. not how I was informed when I was brought in as a speaker. Okay. That's not you, how I was informed. You, Dev, who is an author and a professor from Queen's College and Nebraska. No. No. They gave me the information. All right, okay, thank you. So I'm going to give the floor to Dr. Dev. I just need to, um, I will introduce myself a little bit so that you know where I'm coming from because um, my talk, uh, it's going to be extremely brief um, uh, and I'm going to, uh, it's going to be very different from uh, what the others have said. So I'm sorry, I'm standing with my back to some people here. I uh, really apologize. Um, Okay, so um, I, I, I do want to uh, mention uh, you know, some of my credentials so you understand where I'm coming from. Um, so I, uh, I'm currently a visiting scholar at the Institute for the Study of Human Rights at Columbia, and I'm also um, a global scholar at Rutgers New Brunswick at the Institute for Research on Women, and I teach at both the graduate and undergraduate levels at CUNY. Um, I, uh, uh, I think, you know, there are a couple of things, you know, I mean, I've been listening uh, to you.
to a lot of prominent people here. A um, couple of things. We've always said Hinduism is inclus inclusion, right? And I think, like for example, if you look at Barney Sanders, right? Um, he's very much a proponent, well, he's been speaking against Hinduism, right? Now, the reason is why, okay, first of all, we have fundamental problems within India, meaning it's not a problem, we have many different languages. So there's always the translations and all, I think, plays a major role why it doesn't transmit right away. As opposed to the Muslims, you know, in communications law, they still use their Arabic language. What is your question? So my note, my main, my main question, what I'm trying to, it's not a question, I'm making a comment, is that the many, any time, you know, I think we have to get politicians and even there are Muslims, actually, that are in favor of, and they know the story, like Dr. Rajwan, I think, in India. He speaks, you know, he actually in favor of Modi, and he basically says, you know, we have to approach people also like that. Let me tell we you. cannot say Islam. Let, and let, that me tell, let me tell you something. They are in this world for one reason. They have their goals. They know how to achieve the goals. They know how to fool people. Question is, you should ask question yourself. 1500 years back, Islam came. Before that, Christ was there 2500 years. Now you ask question, people before 2500 years, who were they? What happened to those people? What happened to that history? You should ask this question to yourself and ask those people too. So, no, no. No, no, like when, before you talk, you should know, when we say the Hindu religion is the only religion inclusive, you have to understand that first. Once you understand, then you have to see what others are doing is nothing but to destroy you. No, 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 and I they have games to destroy you. No, no, I'm not talking about that. Uh, absolutely. Again, you have to see, in terms of conversion, right, there are many, many I, things. I, I Let's be very open no, 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 about no, 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 Conversion, conversion is their business. It is for money making. You're, you're still not listening. It is, no, no. You're, you're, not, not, you're not listening to me. You're going totally. Please listen to me what I'm saying. I'm saying yes, Hinduism, I'm saying Hinduism absolutely is one of the greatest philosophic religion, scientific religion. I'm totally in favor. And I'm I'm what I'm trying to say is because Hinduism is the way Hinduism is, which we know is it's you know, it's one of the most scientific language, it's very philosophical, it doesn't discriminate all these things. So with that framework in mind. What I'm trying to say is the moment you say they are Islam, we do. What I'm trying to say, our own philosophy, fundamental philosophy, you're actually, you, you, you're kind of, how to say, you're minimizing the philosophy. What I'm trying to say is that we should reach, you know, politicians and say, look, this is what Hinduism is all about. We support the oppressed. We help the oppressed. Very good. Thank but you very we much. do not. Yes. We agree with you. Thank right. you very much. Yeah, but anyway, the the chief secretary for uh, Bernie Sanders is a Pakistani Muslim. He's the That's one. That's what I'm saying. We have yeah. to reach out politicians. We can talk to. They can speak. The Tulsi government is doing a great job. We can support Tulsi yeah. government. Let me tell you something. All these people are educated people. They are not fools. They have all the information. They don't want to accept whatever they read. That is the problem. It is their mindset. So don't tell us that we can go and educate them. They cannot be educated. Um, I've been, um, Naran Katariyaji is our guru. Uh, um, I think I cried as much as his family cried when he passed away. And uh, so I just want to say that uh, um, we, uh, Hinduism is a, is a religion, uh, is the only religion that is available today in the world that speaks for inclusiveness. Uh, that speaks for the major religion that speaks for us and it is a worth of protecting. It is one of the most scientific religion we have in the world. And if we lose it, it's not just a loss to us, it's a loss to the humanity. When you look at what is going on with the Christian says our God is the only God, Muslim says our God is the only God. And, uh, but uh, even Buddhism also doesn't say that. Ours is the only religion which says that every form of worship, no matter what you call, like Sadhguru says, our country is not a religious, it's a country of seekers. Every god is, uh, in many form you have, is that is why for the, the for what is going on in the world, Hinduism is the best answer we have. And it is the most scientific religion. Everything, I mean, you look at, I mean, most people are only look at the virtue of uh, rituals, 
but behind everything in hinduism there is so much sense behind it and even now they are exploring what it is uh, so we uh, we were uh, um, we have we were been active for last 10 years with the kataria ji pavitra ji and all supporting, uh, supporting bjp supporting also we also support uh, narendra modi ji and uh, uh, bjp in fact my wife went uh, she took her 3 weeks vacation uh, last year this year vacation and did campaigning in the villages in uh, in karnataka so so we all have to do it. There are so many people who have done it and uh, we all have to do it. And that's the only way we are going to make change. But I just want to we would understand what is going on in the world today. Why is Western media talk so against, uh, in spite of so much uh, violence against Hindus, the New York Times, Washington Post, they talk against, they don't even have any words to, positive words to say about uh, what Modi ji and Amit Shah has done, just giving relief. And uh, we have to understand there is a, in this, uh, in the West especially, the Christian fundamentalist, the missionaries, wants to use, wants to use uh, this uh, Hindu-Muslim thing to divide, just like they did in Rwanda. They want to divide and create, speak up the, as if Hindus are uh, most atrocious people and Muslims are the victims. They are playing it up just for the sake of conversion because any time if you look at South America and Rwanda or any other countries what they do is they go to the place look at the differences uh, the fault lines I, I hope some of you heard Raju Malhotra's uh, um, breaking India so there is a complex of uh, missionary forces Islamic forces uh, trying to divide India break India and so please make sure today there is a beautiful article by my colleague uh, Arvind Kumar that came on uh, USCIRF. They are the, uh, all the time they keep uh, 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 attacking Hindus and uh, India. So just be informed what is going on. Just don't take what New York Times says. But most importantly, if somebody comes and says, uh, my family was driven out, for example, like I was saying earlier, and driven out to stand in a placard in a meeting, it has, go, it has a potential to go all over the world instantly. So you have to come out of your nest come out and uh, speak, that is very, very important. You can talk here in a closet here and we can do it, but you go out the social media instantly, you can, millions and billions of people can see. So if you are affected family, we request you to come to the Times Square, we have empty placards and your family, say my family is empty, and my, this is what happened in my family, it matters. So please speak up and uh, this world is, the uh, only way we can save this uh, humanity today is, whether they want to call it Hinduism or not, it is the principles of Hinduism is going to save this country, this world. So now question is why he got sued? Because when you fight, you always have reaction. But when you win, it gives you a lot of uh, courage to fight back also. So what he is doing is very remarkable. What uh, I think if a lot of people who are sitting here, if they can take time out and join him on two o'clock, it will be a great thing actually. And I request everybody, if you are having not much work, please go and attend the program with him. And I hope he will give him some time to talk also. So now when we are, when uh, uh, we just heard about it, how people have suffered in Bangladesh, same thing happened to me. I was also three, four years old. And my father told me, you know who came to kill him? His own Muslim friend. Nobody else came to kill him. His own Muslim friend came to kill him and told him, now this time that I had killed you. My father said, hey, we are friends together for so many years. Why we have to kill each other? He said, no, now this is Islamic nation. You have no right to live here and I have to kill you. My father backed him and that's why I'm survived today. And today, if you ask me, the most hated community in the world is only one. It's Muslims. And look at all the Muslims who have done to their own country. These, these are not real Muslims. Bangladeshi Muslims are not real Muslims. Pakistani Muslims are not real Muslims. Real Muslims are in Saudi Arabia. These are all converts. And who are these converts from? From Hinduism, Buddhism. Now these converts are destroying their own nation. Look what they have done to Iraq, what they have done to Syria, what they have done to Libya. These are all converted people. They are not real Muslim people. Real Muslim people converted them to destroy themselves to destroy their own race. And these people don't know what's happening to them and what they are doing actually. 
So we need some good writers, and hopefully some writer will educate them and inform them, hey, you are destroying yourself, your own race, own culture, and look at the other people who converted you, they enjoy, they having a good time. So the question is, some information is uh, not going out properly, and maybe it is a duty as a 21st era to educate people, inform people what is right and what is wrong, and hopefully this happens soon. On Dilip Chakraborty ji, the president of the North American Bengali Conference and the Cultural Association of Bengal. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, my friends, and uh, Mr. Shani and Professor Chaudhuri and some of my old friends. It's, it's a very honoring for me to say a few words in this meeting. I was, I was asked by Mr. Chaudhuri a couple of days ago and uh, I could make it. I'm so lucky that I met all of you. And I hear some of the pains I hear some of the enthusiasms so far spoken by Dr. Kakar and Shahadeji. I'll tell you a few things of my experience as a Hindu who was, family was living in Bangladesh and I was, when India was divided, I believe it was divided on the basis of two things, on the religion and religion only. Hindus will live in Hindustan, which is nowadays India, and Muslims will live in Pakistan, which is known, was known as East Pakistan and West Pakistan before. Now is East Pakistan became Bangladesh and West Pakistan remains Pakistan. So if that was done by the uh, Mahatma Gandhi leadership and the heritage support, and our, uh, our Bengali leaders, they all wanted that way. So my question was very simple. When I was like three and four years old, one day some people came to our house, they were Muslims, and they said, they were, my father was known in the area as Thakuta since we were Bengali Brahmins, we had a temple in the area, my father was very, Learned man, my grandfather, that was our tradition. So everybody used to tell my dad, Thakurda. They came and said, Thakurda, you have 24 hours to leave this place. And if you don't, we'll simply come and kill you. My question, when I was, my father took his suitcase and hold my hand and my sister's hand, my mother and my aunt, we were going into the train station. Then I asked my dad, Baba, what means, Daddy, what happened? Why do I have to leave this place? My father said, you don't understand it. Someday when you understand, try to help. Everybody who became like you today and who will become like you tomorrow. If you can bring a change into their lives, that will be the best thing you will be doing as a human being, as a Hindu, because Hindus ism is the most most powerful and most valuable thing you are born in try to utilize it so my question to all these things all our hindu brothers and hindu sisters nowadays whenever we see something is happening muslims are doing something we just try to say or not to see it not to think about it yes our gentleness is considered by the other party. In other words, Muslims, they think we are cowards. We don't have the strength to fight back. Or we will never, instead of fighting back, we will never attack them. They are atrocities. I'm not trying to attack them personally. They are atrocities. That should be attacked all the times. And whenever you see any Hindu, any Hindu innocent person is being tortured or anything, please raise your voice because 
we have to speak up. If we don't speak up, nobody will understand our tear, understand our pain, understand our destitute situation that we are in. So we must speak up and we must say to our God, God, thank you, you made me a Hindu and I must carry your duty as a Hindu. That's all I, I want to say. And also, I want to say one other verse. Gita said, Ma faleshu kadachuna, means, Phalejjama bhabbinda, apni kajkuna, fall, God will give you. And say, Phalejjama bhabbinda, amar kuna udhikar day. That udhikar remains to everybody. Thank you. You do what is right, and when you do something right, you don't worry about the, the results, because Gita says very clearly, you have, your job is to do action only. You have, don't have to worry about the results. So let's not worry about the results. Let's do the things which are necessary to do. I appreciate that you people are here and it's time to take action, not just discussion. And discussions are important, no doubt about it, but after discussion, we should come up with some action plan and hope after this meeting, some people will get together, find some leadership among themselves and take some actions. And I think today's discussion, Dr. Cooker has given us a, a reasons to fight back because others are sharpening their knives. Now question is, do you want to be dead? Or do you want to be alive? Files look, uh, file a food in international court, but because the relationship between the India and you know, Bangladesh would be at stake if government were to do that, is it possible for a forum to have a class action suit, maybe in US, I don't know if it falls under the jurisdiction or not, but otherwise at least in some court where you get some attention in media. So what we need is first draw media attention I don't think government of India would do that because of the relationship between Bangladesh and India and obviously you know, that it can be at stake. But I think it would be good for the forum to look at that and find even a token food and then have a media talk about it. I'm going to answer that with a quote from Sir Winston Churchill. Sir Winston Churchill, even when India was still not an independent nation, said, while the Hindu elaborates on his arguments, the Muslim is sharpening his sword. So, sir, what Sir Winston Churchill said at that time, we are still doing that. We don't have to worry. I, I may have said it in a very thing, but it's a very serious matter. By nature, we are reasonable people. We look at the reason and I say, forget the reason. Whether they act or not, that is their job. My conscience is clear. I raised my voice. I went out. I appealed to it. I don't give a damn what he does. I, I agree with you that that should still be done. But the chances of government of India filing a suit will be very less. So as a secondary, is it possible for the forum to file any food in a court? Because that is needed to draw attention in media. Because sometimes the media doesn't pay attention, but it is in the court and there is few hearings and the matter is put in the court with evidence, there will be some media attention. You gave me a very good thought in your discussion. Why not few Bangladesh is right I mean. here, right here, file a suit in the United States court saying, we have been deprived of this, this by Bangladeshi government and we file a suit against Bangladeshi government. Okay? Very good thought, and you gave me the thought, I just elaborated on it. And you will get far more attention than all these hundreds of meetings we have. And Atarias and Kartarias Sam knows it better, because when Congress filed a suit against them, because they had the courage to say something, huh? $100 million, and we won it. We won it. Okay, and we were supported by the community to fight the case. That's another thing. We didn't have to spend our own money. Community supported us. So let's file the suit and then see what happens. Yeah, and we can do crowd funding for that if needed. Yes. There are attorneys who will be very happy to take it. Take an American attorney, I'm telling you, with the help of a Bengali attorney, because he will add passion. An American attorney will bring attention. I don't have to say to you, when a white man files a suit in a white country, okay? Yeah. 
Okay. I'm a I'm an outright speaker. Okay. I've been given death threats in the United States three times. Okay. So this is nothing new to me. Okay. And I'm still living. Okay. Thanks, Pavitra, who I know has been working for this community for the last maybe more than 35 or 40 years that I know of. I'm not a Bengali. I don't look like from Bengal, okay? Uh, but some or other, I think that revolutionary spirit of Bengal seemed to have seeped into me. I do not know whether because of association with these guys or Manaranjan Datta, who was a professor at Rutgers University and one of my mentors. Anyway, the point we really have today is what is life like living in Pakistan or Bangladesh? Let's stay to Bangladesh for non-Muslims. You know, I am an outsider in a way. I don't live in Bangladesh. My family is not there. I am not uprooted. I am from Punjab. And fortunately, when the partition took place, my hometown came within India, and the border from my hometown is only three miles. So it's a stroke of luck that, you know, I am within India. I was a little kid, okay? All I knew is how people were crossing into Pakistan, and the trains are coming from Pakistan with dead bodies. Not live bodies, they were dead bodies. But I was not allowed to go, I was too little. The point we're really making today is when any nation works and gives shelter to the oppressed, that nation is complimented, that nation is appreciated by the world. Here, India has gone out of its way after almost a lapse of 50 years of suffering of Bangladeshi, Hindus, Sikhs, and other minorities. And it is being ridiculed in the West. And it is being even agitated against by some of the Indians in India. That is because none of us spread what went on and what you all suffered from or your family when you came. I was amazed that one of my own colleagues, whom I know for 15 years plus, it's only yesterday that I found out what he went through when he was a little kid, how he hid in the sari of her mother, and how he walked for four or five days to come to India. Because we don't talk about it. If we don't talk about it, how will anybody know what we went through? Okay? It is the first time yesterday that I learned from a Kashmiri and I have Kashmiri friends for the last 50 years. I've been in this country for about 53 years. 53 years. Sorry, it disclosed my age, okay? I could have otherwise said I'm much younger than that. Okay? <laughs> but just to say, and he told me that from the Muslim masjid, it wasn't namaz that was coming. The message coming was, Leave your daughters and go. Are you with me? Leave your daughters and go. And that was the message. Okay? So they just left with their children. The, the question at this time is not that. This community, the Bengali community, minorities, in Bangladesh have been suffering for more than 1971, and this is about 48 years. And, and Senator Kennedy, in 1971, has recorded on November 1st, 1971, that the Hindu community has been suffering in Bangladesh for the last so many years, and he used straight words, which we don't use, I do, but most of you don't, I think, have been massacred, have been gruesomely killed, and 
This has been written in Wall Street Journal as far back as 1985, has been written in Time Magazine as far back as 2001, to the age 2019, that's 18 years ago, and has been reported by the Canadian Human Watch Group from 2001 to 2007. And there have been delegation from the United States Congress to Bangladesh, am I right? And Pobitra was there when the delegation went. I do not know whether you went there or not, but I did not. Because if I had gone there, you wouldn't be seeing me alive here now. I would be also gone, okay? Because that's what is the culture, unfortunately, of this. So what can we do? There are a few things as Bengalis and Bangladeshis you can do. Okay? That is, whether you write an open letter, taking even a small advertisement in your local paper, sending a petition to the Prime Minister, saying all Bangladeshi, Hindus, and minorities who have been made to leave their country we need restitution and monetary compensation for the property we left behind. <laughs> we, Bangladeshi, and you have records of it. The record is published in one of the books that some of you published, and it is published from within the United States, New York. I will be able to give you that number, the address of that book, okay? Later on in the discussion, I have it written. And the next item you can request them is that those people who were responsible for committing these crimes, they should be prosecuted and charged with crimes. Personally, not generic government of Bangladesh. No government of Bangladesh. Abdul Hazan or Abdul Khan or Yahya Khan these are the three responsible people in this area. They were the police commissioner and they ordered this, 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 and they should be charged with crime. Third thing, where you could all say to the government of India, because nobody else will listen to you, to say, we need this issue to be raised in the international court of faith. No time to sit back and just react, time to act. There's a big difference between reaction and action. Reaction is you're just trying to save yourself. Action is you say, here you go, okay? And it is time to do that. We, by nature, are gentle, but our gentleness should not be considered that we are coward, and that is where it is. It is time to speak and call a spade a spade. There are so many, my own highly educated friends and others, they have no idea what happened to Bangladeshi Hindus, whether their daughters were raped or not. Are you all aware that they have raped wives in presence of their husband and children? Did you see it in any newspapers in the United States, even Indian newspapers? No. What the hell happened? Are we dead? Or are we idiots? Or we are combined? Both of it. Why isn't there? Somebody comes and rapes my neighbor's daughter and I don't speak about it. Forget about my own daughter. So if you don't speak, how will people know? If I were you, if I were you, I would even take a ad in the local Bengali newspaper saying, this is what has happened. And when the government of India gives me time, and when the government of India gives us this opportunity to come back, it is a God-given gift to save these human beings from the clutches of Islam. Call the word as it is. Don't miss word. Don't say Bangladeshi government. Say the word. It's not Bangladeshi government. It is Islam that's doing it to you. Thank you very much.